that's so exciting and it's so amazingly attractive. Yeah, you're not laughing now, are you? It's not the best start. I've done, it. I've done a really good one as well. Flew across there. Flew across the available space. I'm just relaxing. I'm just sitting here, like relaxing. Just everyone all right? With a bit of that relaxing. Let's get a good angle. Look at those. Fucking ridiculous. Just relaxing. Yeah. Right. So, um, Dan's coming on. The Iconoclast is coming on. I'm feigning energy. I am shattered. And I say that so you can identify with it. Um, I'm just going to send Dan the invite. He's already got it, but because we've done this enough times to know it works. But I haven't checked because I got a bit of a kip in. Yeah, you know, I think he's telling me he's going to give me a. A little bit of time to do the usual. I say that he's just he's just joined. Dan, I'm going to be about because I've got to say, well, there's 65 people here already. What should I do? Uh, uh, let, let's uh, Vox Populi. Watch this. One in the chat. I get Dan in immediately. <laughs> Imagine no one did. I'm just going to bring you in, Dan. Hello, mate. Oh, hello. Wasn't expecting that so soon. How are you doing? Oh, going to be like that. See, this is the problem with Dan. He's got this kind of faux, faux humility that sometimes can just... Uh... <laughs> hello, Dan. Look, I'm loving it. It's a, it's a sea of ones. Is it? I'm not even looking. It I would assumed be. it would be. Yeah, of course. I mean... Um, what an absolute pleasure. So we've been planning this for a while, and uh, everyone likes cancellation, but it didn't happen, did it? Both of us actually... We're here. Yeah, I've been asleep, Dan. I've been asleep for about two hours. Yeah, don't worry about it. I mean, the thing <laughs> is, when we organise these streams, you're right, you've said this before, but I often get in touch with you over WhatsApp and usually had a few Stellas. And I'm like, you know, let's do a fucking, let's do a stream at Christmas. And uh, then a couple of days later, I say, actually, let's not do that. But it's this time, no. Nope. Yeah, this time, yep, yeah, let's do it. It's Christmas time. I can't believe it's the end of the year already. It's been, it's, it's like it never even happened the year. It's come and gone very quick. It's frighteningly fast, isn't it? Frightening. You know, there's some good papers out there. There's a particularly good one on psychology today that talks about. Um, um your experience of time and uh it says when you're young you know let's just take a, a 10 years old so much of your life is new there's a lot more information to process you know e even simple things like having an apple you've eaten an apple before but hang on why is this one slightly softer why is it a different color uh, why does it taste different uh you know just there's so much new stuff going on, and every kid gets called a you know, oh, another bloody five minute wonder. You know, your parents say that to you, don't they? I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna be an ice skater. Well, Mum, buy me a hockey ice hockey outfit because I met some bloke who's got it, and there's a ice rink near where they live. It's only five hours drive, and you could take me there once a year or something. And you get accused of being a five-minute wonder, but that's what it should be as a kid because you're, you know, you're going through everything, trying to, you know, uh, involve yourself in things, learn things, and explore the world. Now, because of that, um, your experience of time, it all goes very slow. Like, when you're a kid and you're forced to do something boring, like waiting, well, waiting. <laughs> waiting <laughs> when you're a kid is a yes. forever affair, isn't it? You know, your mother goes in the post office, leaves you outside. You can't stand too still outside a post office or people start trying to put coins in your head. Yeah, see, I used to be a stand why, why didn't she take you in the post office? What was wrong with you? What's, uh, what's the deal with that? I say, Dan, that you went that way. Yeah, so really. Why didn't she? She Well, my mum never took me in a lot of shops. It's almost like she's tying you up outside like a dog. What's going on? That, that's strange. I, that's what I just suddenly thought. Are you? You've Can you landed? not control yourself, Chris, in public? 
She died a few months ago, Dan, and you'll be really horrible to oh, her. Well, you can't, you can't pull that on me. Jesus. <laughs> well, you, Dan, you, in, uh, you can't do that. <laughs> in, I recently done a, a short on my sub stack because I'm a writer. There's a link in the description. Are you a writer? I don't think you ever talk about that, you know. No. <laughs> I've never said that before. <laughs> and it's, you know, I don't, it's not something I like to talk about. I'm very shy about it. And I, <laughs> But um, reserved is the word I'd use. Sure. Um, but um, they're all true. Or, you know, my paraphrasing of conversations I witnessed. And there's one of them on there, and it, it absolutely happened. There was a bloke called Storm. Um, that's another story altogether. He got punched once in the head and died after getting clean. Ah, that's a different story. But before he died, obviously, Jeez. his father died. He found out about nine o'clock in the morning. This girl come round. I didn't. I didn't know her. This was down in Devon, and she was like, "Storm, can you get us a few bags?" And he was like, "Oh yeah, I you know, I just you know, it, it, he was fucked. It threw him, you know." And uh, and then she waited about five seconds, and she was like, "Storm, hurry up! When are you gonna score?" He went, listen, my dad died. I'm just, and she went, you can't, can't keep using that as an excuse. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> just like, uh, there are things more important, like drugs. That's the way it is. You know, like that. Uh, yeah, still dining out on that old one. I mean, minutes have passed since you got the <laughs> telegram. <laughs> and I mean, telegram, you know. Written. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. When as you get as you age, you do you become more habitual and you start refining your behaviours, which means doing less new things, and so your experience of time speeds up because you're not processing processing so much information. You're not actually engaged with reality. I mean, I, I should have all that whole ten minutes twaddle just, and I could have said. Time flies when you're having fun. But essentially, <laughs> yes. when you get older, and I've noticed it as well, for sure. You know, the years between 10 and 18 was like, just went on forever. Amazing. But the years between 40 and 50 have taken about an afternoon, I think. It just <laughs> Right. Speaking of death, my grandmother died two weeks ago as well. So. You can't keep using that as an excuse. I know it's, it's only been two weeks. Uh... Uh, that is sad, though. Were you close with her? Somewhat. I mean, here's the thing: like uh, most of my grand, well, most of my grandparents are dead. I've only got one left, and uh, didn't really inherit anything from them. So hopefully, this one's different. You know, we'll see. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> I'm just going to adjust my lighting while my heart takes the. Emotional hit of that. Yeah. Um, um, of course, I'm just joking. But uh, she was 87 years old. It was like you know she had a, a long life. You didn't. But the caveat, it was excellent. Here's yeah. here's the interesting thing though. But she was very. She was a bit like me. You know, I'm I'm kind of an asshole and sarcastic. She wasn't as overt as me, but in her will. Well, in her instructions, she said, "I don't, I don't want a funeral after I'm dead. Just bag me and burn me." Literally, her words: "Bag me and yeah, burn me." Wow. That's it. So we're not having a funeral. I think she might. That all. That's all getting handled by my uncle. That might have already happened. I don't know. So it's very like it's almost not even a death. It's just something that maybe happened. I don't know. It's very odd, but I kind of prefer that actually. It's not bad. No more funerals. It's um. Uh, 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 Frankfurt School Jewish Marxist uh, Walter Benjamin talked about death and historically how it's uh, changed its function and how it's treated differently socially. And he, one of the lines is, it, it, you know, and he's talking about only like 100 years ago, there wasn't a house or a dwelling that hadn't been touched by death and the locals knew it, you know. All the houses in the village or the town, because there was a community that had been there a while, generations. You know, you knew that old Percy Brown sort of was born and died in that house, and his father mm -hmm. was born and died in that house. And, you know, I'm sure there's people in the chat now who um, there's none of that in that. The, they live in a place they know nothing of its sort of 
history. And, you know, a lot of people do die in houses, which is quite a strange thing. Yeah. Uh, one good thing that my grandmother did, actually, she wrote her memoirs over years. Wow. Handwritten. Yeah. And uh, I've been reading through some of it, or rather my mother's been reading through it and been telling me what it's like. Man, she didn't have an easy life. Back th she was actually from London. She grew up in Gravesend in London and then oh, got yeah, shipped off. From me. Yeah, yeah so she got yet. yeah, she got shipped off up north when the war kicked off and then just stayed up here really. So it's she uh, interesting to hear about that. Yeah, yeah. So uh, do you know roughly how old she was when she must have been like, you know, a toddler, like eight or nine or something? I don't know. I think she must have when was she born? Was it 36? Something like that. Right, okay. Sure. Um that would have made her about 82 or something. I'm get, absolutely guessing, not having the... No, she was 87, which I don't know when she was born, actually, but she was 87 when she died. Right, okay. But, um, yeah, she, she got shipped off up north, stayed here, met my granddad. He was second choice, apparently, because there was another more suave guy that was courting her. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> something happened to him, and my granddad swooped in. And she's like, oh, well, I guess this is it then, settling. So, um, yeah, it's it's really interesting to hear about this, you know. Is it but, in the story? That is, does your nan write this? Yeah, she wrote it. She wrote it hard. She's like, no, but she, she wasn't a writer. Did Well, she was, so. Did she write about the the granddad being the second choice? That's what I mean. Yes, yeah, that, yeah, exactly. Oh yeah. So that's a like a measure of the truth you're going to get in this document. Sounds absolutely fascinating. So, I know. Well, when my mother's there. finished with it, I'm going to try and get it and type it up maybe and just see if I can, uh, t you know, spread it around to my family members. You know, it'd be really interesting to to read it. And it got oh, me I'm thinking. And I know, I know you're it. writing a novel that's very, based, that's very much based <laughs> on your own experiences, okay? Um, but a lot of people will not have that. I guess now the modern version is the digital footprint that we all leave behind. You yeah. know, when someone dies and their Facebook account is still there, it's quite eerie. And you see yeah. everything that I've ever written and done online. It's... But I, th I find my grandma, she wrote, literally hand wrote her memoirs. It's much classier, isn't it? You'd rather do did, that. Did she, um, is it like in diary form? I mean, did she sort of get to a certain age and think, right, I'm going to start writing what happened? So, you know, like I was I, I was born in Sussex and uh, spent the first two years. Or, you know, I, I'm just – how did, did you know she was doing it when she was alive? No, I didn't. I had no idea. Oh, I had no idea. Did the family? I think my mother might – she might have mentioned it something to my mom in passing, but – None of us knew the extent of it, so I it's mean, very in-depth. These things cause problems, Dan, in, a, in an exciting way. Um, <laughs> yes. There's, there's a great teacher I've been talking about recently, Jack Grapes. He teaches method writing. It's like that's taken from method acting, and it's 100% mm -hmm. how I work. He doesn't talk about plot. You don't plot anything. Um, from voice, which is your voice, your your honest voice your truth your deeper truths comes character and from characters comes story um and there's a love there's a load of his stuff gone up on the internet recently which is, is an absolute treat for writers and anyone wanting to write but there's a bit in it where the woman interviewing him wants to know how he teaches and what some of the things he does and so he takes her to this deeper truth thing where you go from a very simple I statement about your life. And, and so she says something like, I've been feeling a bit down lately. And he using some very, they're not tricks, but using some very simple question and answer techniques. He gets to the deeper truth and then the deeper truth and the deeper truth. And within about five minutes, she's talking about the fact that um, she recently found out that her dad isn't her biological father and oh, uh, she yeah and she'd been lied to and and he was and, and there's a bit while she's talking where she goes oh, and he says to her that there that emotion what right where you are there that's where you write from because mm. that's what people want to hear because they'll then go oh and that's what people will pay for and that's what people will say to their friends 
have you read this? Or you've got to read this, you know, you've got to read this because it's affected them emotionally. And she says, the interview, this will come back to make sense to what you said. Uh, the the interviewer sort of says, I, you know, I, I would, I would um, go further with this with you, but this is going to be on the internet. You know, if we were in a class, I'd, I'd, I'd happily go sort of further. But, and he says, yeah, but you, as a writer, you should cause trouble. Mm. It's part of the job, and he he, he quotes Goethe. But it's, it's it's attributed to Goethe, but I don't think Goethe said it. The quote is something like, "Be bold, be brave, and uh, and God's will." F- hang on, hang on. Goethe, be bold, will protect. That should be it. Yeah, be bold and be bold, be brave, and mighty forces will come to your aid. And my first novel, I was 23, 24. And I, you know, I was, I'd, I'd been paid to publish uh, journalist, journalistic stuff before then. So I was already giving it the right, a big one. And uh, I tossed, tossed, but I did. I, you know, it was a couple of grand, half ounce of speed and two weeks and I penned a 130 page novel. <laughs> um, published it, which was then uh, known as Vanity Publishing, but I didn't have to put any money up, uh, which was sort of takes the edge off it. Sold nearly nine, just over nine thousand copies. Not bad for a first author, first novel. But I didn't consider any of this stuff. And of course, there were people in it whose names I didn't change, mm-hmm. um, and it affected their lives. And I talked about my brother. I've said things about my brother on YouTube that he's not happy about at all. Um, my mother read it, you know, and when my mother said, she said something about a, a particular scene in it, and it was a real empty comment. I, I'm going to get back to your grandmother's work, but Not it was a, a real, I, I have to explain this bit. It was an empty comment. The only reason she told me, uh, mentioned that bit, like I didn't say, Mommy, I'll lose my novel, give it a read. Um, she just did and she mentioned something and i thought what, 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 what the fuck was her motivation and i i quickly went back and i'd look at the the novel and the only motivation really was to let me know she'd read that bit and that bit there was a a load of talk about some quite degenerate sexual activity and it was oh, clearly yes. me the novel it was there was no <laughs> pretense that it was someone else right. and so i was standing there Forever after that moment, she knew that I knew she knew that about me. Now, mothers know their kids have sex, but most mothers don't have to know that all their friends, like, oh, boy, I heard your boy's novel got published. Oh, I read a review in I, uh, ID. Oh, I'm going to buy one. And, and so, you know, so... The, it's almost like a, a Lars von Trier film. It's almost like Festen or something. But the potential that your nan's written this manuscript, and that could, you know, that could change the lives of everyone who reads it because it's it's about them. It's about you, Dan. Well, that's a good. That yeah, that's you spot on there. I don't know if I'm actually in it yet. I don't think my my mom's read that far yet, but. I would but you are, that. but you are anyway. If you see what I mean, it's your yeah. family. So of your course. mother is, without a doubt. Oh yeah, you know, definitely. These yeah. casual throwaway lines in this kind of, um, you know, you know, everyone says, "Oh, everyone's got a book in them." I always add, unfortunately, to the end of that. But this kind of more sort of not trying to be a writer it doesn't sound like she tried to be a writer. It sounds like she made a document and something had to motivate that and so she's going to talk about your mum i know it's and weird isn't it yeah my tell, uncle tell me a little bit what, what do you know about it so far i don't i know about i know what i've told you basically i know that my granddad was was the second choice but it's kind of played off quite humorously you know because my grand my granddad was a, a stubborn old bastard you know but we all liked him for that reason but when you look at it through her eyes this this guy that she was clearly more enamored with, for, I don't know what happened to him. I don't know why that never happened. Oh, I think he moved to Australia. Actually, he was on one of those cheap tickets to go to Australia back in the the fifties, I think it was, when everyone moved over there. Uh, so he left, 
and then my granddad was kind of just the coal miner left over and she went with him um but you know that's such a huge thing on, in someone's cool. say life that again. say that again it broke it, just, it went quiet i don't know why what's the last thing you heard he went to australia yes and then my granddad was a coal miner right North, and he was just kind of hanging around and i guess she just went for him afterwards or he went for her but you know like just that tiny little thing there i mean i wouldn't exist you know it's just these tiny little moments if that guy never went to australia to seek work or whatever he was doing but it'd be you know, it's, it's incredible. And from, and from and from her perspective, I mean, this is marriage and kids we're talking about. She's spending the rest of her life with a man, and to to outwardly admit, yeah, he was second choice. Yeah. Imagine that. Massive. It's massive. Yeah. It's funny though. I I really like this. I think these, you know, like I, I like writing, obviously, and I like the sort of power it adds. You know the. To, to to put that in means it's relevant, right? Oh, yeah. So your so your nan's there, and she's getting this document, this manuscript. Uh, do I mention that um, old Ronnie or whatever his name was? Do I mention that I was actually in love with Sansa? <laughs> so, yes, yeah. yeah, I do put that in. It's, it's interesting yeah. that she put that in. I mean, he's I still, think he's still alive as well. By the way, he's still alive. Oh fuck! Yeah, he he came to visit about ten years ago. And they met up for a coffee. <laughs> imagine said, imagine that conversation. That novel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, dear me. On, so they're not together. Hang on, I'm getting very confused here. So this is the nan that died a few months back. Two weeks ago, yeah. Okay. So we and were clearing he... out the house and we found all these, you know, these memoirs and things like that. But so uh, if if they're he's still alive, so they split up a while back. Oh yeah, I mean in the uh, when was it in the fifties he left to go to Australia? Oh, okay. Yeah, something or, or the early. I'm, I'm not sure when it was, but a long time ago. But he yeah. So I think my mom already knew about this because my grandmother must have told her because he came to visit about ten years ago, and I think my mother met him actually, and she said he was he was wonderful. <laughs> what a lovely man he was. <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> Um, that's just funny, you know, it's just thinking about because this year has gone so quick and I know we're going to get into this year in general and what's happened, you know, you think about someone's entire life essentially and how different it could have been if it weren't for this one decision or this one change in circumstance. Yeah, no, for sure. Dan, have you seen, I don't even think, I don't think it's Lars von Trier. Have you seen Festen? No. First, um, let me just check because it is worth it. I've got, I've got um, to make an announcement as well. First and movie, and it's an important movie as well. Uh, why is it all? Why don't they give you the information? Oh, it's Tommy Vinterberg. Weirdly, he usually works with um, the good-looking bloke. Uh, made loads of films. Anyway. Festen, I'm not. I'm not for a minute suggesting that your grandmother's manuscript is Festen. By the way, I need to, <laughs> right. need to okay. stipulate that. But that's blown me away that Winterberg made that actually. Um, Festen is uh, it's the grandfather's like 90th birthday or something. I, I think mm. you really like it actually. You, you, you like movies. It's proper cinema, you know. It's uh, storytelling. And it's his 90th birthday, something like that, 80th. But he's an old codger in his wheelchair, and the whole family are there, the sort of like the four sons, two daughters, their husbands and wives, the grandkids and everything. And everyone's like, oh, you know, let's have a toast to grandfather, old lovely Bill, or whatever his name is. Um, it's uh, Danish, I think. And, um, and you suddenly see one bloke getting a bit frustrated with it all. <laughs> and then he stands up and says, yeah, are we not going to talk about the, the sexual abuse and all that, though? Oh, dear. And, yeah, man, it's fucking hard. I mean, you know, I, I can watch any horror movie you care to mention like this. Yeah, same. They, same. They don't, as a child, they terrified me, but I, I just... You might get a jump out of me, but you could do that just by clapping, you know. But Festen is a bit like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like no, no, 
and the kids start arguing you know you made that up and, 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 and yeah difficult difficult movie um i'll tell you what uh scrubs lovely to see 146 people here entropy grifting is the links at the top um what's it called super jack grifting at the bottom it is christmas <laughs> send some my way but listen i've got an important announcement i want to thank dan for coming on though all, all joking aside it's always lovely to talk to him um i want i've got to tell you something about a scrub um so most of you will know tech roach right t-e-c-h-r-o-a-c-h you need to remember that just in case he's watching he's not dead but just it well just in case he's watching you all know most of you will know that he was uh, he was in a lot of trouble in, in his wife had made accusations about him um she done the usual trick of turning the kids against him this happened this happened. you know i never wanted to tell you what he told me because it he didn't want me to but he gave me quite detailed breakdowns and this has been going on for like the last 10 years or something in his life dragging on you know courts lawyers blah, 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 blah. And it's reached it reached its conclusion, certainly its legal conclusion. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um un totally unsurprisingly, the system's completely fucked him. He's lost his job and probably chance of working. There was uh insinuations of sexual abuse that uh, that the mother has poisoned the kids with he can't see his kids ever oh, oh until they're 18 or something and if they want to see him he, you know it's just wow um he's lost his house uh all his money it, it's he's just been kicked out at the end spat out at the end of now obviously i don't know the ins and outs of this but i do know uh, having spoken a lot to 42 about this, that the system kind of does this to the man in these situations, certainly in the West. And he's just been spat out and he said to me, I'm, um, words to the effect of, I'm pissed all the time and, and suicidal. And so I just thought if on, on the off chance he's watching, stick a tech roach in the chat, I'll get the ball rolling. It's pretty rough. It's fucking awful, man. I mean, I said to him, I'll talk to you anytime, but not if you're drunk, because it's not worth it. It's not worth it, you know. Right, right. Um, and I've, I, I sent him another email yesterday, just say, I'm always here. But if people are drunk, I've tried it before, people who have got problems with alcohol, if you try talking to them, they're drunk, so not a lot happens. But that's lovely of you people. I mean, he has been around here for six or seven years, and... And it's very hard me trying to say to him, don't I said I sort of said, don't let them beat you, but fuck me, you know. And thought I don't know if you know, Dan, 42's worked with men's rights and all that luck for years, actually got talking to government ministers, got things changed, actually had some very pragmatic things. And has got some horror stories about the way men have been treated over the years in these sorts of situations. I had a friend at art school who had two kids with this woman who she was his wife. She joined a cult, and the cult are like, yes, you do. yeah, yeah, right. And they're well versed on how to steal the children and wife. So they taught her, well, this is what he thinks because it just all changed within like a week. Um, he was then up in court on a on sexual abuse charges, and it was something weird like um, the 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 kids were in the bath. Like me and my brother used to have a bath together, just because that's what we you'd done as a kid, you know, when we were like yeah. three and four, or whatever. Right. And uh, the the kids, the father's gone. You know, go on, clean clean your winkles, clean your winkles. <laughs> which then in court has got the kids like video deposition saying daddy told us to play with our winkles oh for christ's and, sake yeah and he can't see them he can't see them but as much as that's an absolute tragedy the rest of his life's fucked 
no woman's going to go, you know, oh, by the way, I'm on the sexual abuse registry. I've got a couple of kids I can't see. And even when you say, but it was all lies, you know. People yeah, that's are, what you would say. Of course yeah. you would say that, right? Exactly. Yeah, so, that's ridiculous. No, yeah. I remember you talking to you. Uh, you told me about 42 in his work previously. So. Yeah, incredible stuff. Yeah. We've got another stream soon. Um He's got the, the scoop on Jordan Peterson's sinister underlying kind of anti-male uh, agenda. So I'm looking forward to that. Fucking can't stand Jordan Peterson. Never been no. a fan, you know. Never been a fan. You know when he blew up? When was it? 2015, something like that. A bit later. I think he was after Milo, wasn't he? Milo was earlier. And then it was yeah. Jordan Peterson that came up. I just, I just couldn't get into it, man. I've, I don't know what it was. I, I couldn't understand the popularity. I understand his messaging, and I, I could understand why it would be appealing to a certain number of people. But I, the reason why... This is going to sound really shallow, by the way. But the reason why I couldn't really take him seriously is because I looked at him, and he just looked like a weak guy. <laughs> kind of, you, know, you know what I mean? Just, just kind of like a fairy. I think yeah. there's that's fair enough. You trust in your instincts, you know. I just you're, don't you're... like when I see him and Douglas Murray having a three hour conversation with their legs crossed. I'm just like, fuck <laughs> it. I can't, I just can't do it, man. Yeah, I, I, do you know what you I, know. I know? It's, I know it sounds a bit silly, but it doesn't. That's what I think. That's what I, I mean. Think. If you were to pick a certain concept and see what he had to say about it, sure, that then I think it would sound a bit ridiculous, but. Your genetics have survived for, for whatever reasons because you've trusted, you know, your instincts when you've seen things. So I, I think I think there's you know there's a lot. I think only I think language only spoken language only accounts for something like ten percent of the communication humans have. And so right. if you're if you get a, a kind of a off of someone, it's. It's probably so that, but you know, it, doesn't, know. it doesn't help himself because I can accept that kind of demeanor from someone like a Douglas Murray, for example. But Jordan it's Peterson, because, because, well, I think that's yeah, maybe something to do with yeah. it. But but Jordan Peterson, he goes on these kind of unhinged rants where he kind of looks a bit like a demon sometimes. You know when he's complaining about the troll, the, the troll demons of Twitter or something, <laughs> and he just goes off it, and it's like Jesus, what is there's something going on here, you know. It's very contradictory. He's been crying a lot over the last few years online, and yeah, I, I think he's literally still crying. On Xanax. Yeah, no, crying, weeping, yeah. and I think that's Xanax. It's very much a, a Xanax dependence thing to do, and no, I haven't got a problem with that. But there, I'm, I'm very suspicious. I mean, look. Some of what he says I agree with, and some of what he says I don't. That's my position on most people. But um, that whole drug addiction thing, it doesn't sit right with me, what he said about it and his journey and all that bullshit. Um, and ever since then, I've been a little bit more suspicious. But that's suspicious. But Devin Tracy always said to me, you're, you're not listening. You're not listening to him because there's... I mean, it's a bit try, isn't it? You know, clean up your room. What? You're talking, you're talking to children. The West is dying. You're telling me to put my socks in the drawer. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I mean, I'm not doing much more, if anything, but I'm not pretending to, you know. No, no, I get it. But someone in the chat just said that Douglas Murray is a grifter. And I, you look, I, I don't disagree with that at all. I had a... Can you remember when... Well, what was his book? The Strange Death of Europe came out. When was that? Yeah. 2017. And I own that book. And it's it's well written. It's you know, it's very well done. But it's very much like the problem that a lot of these people have. And part of the reason why I don't really get involved anymore is because they're very good at pointing out the problems. They're very good at talking. You know, it's it's all the doom mongering and oh my God, what's good? Things need to change, it's going downhill, and then they just leave it at that. Yeah. The it's strange nice death of Europe, I always say it's not that strange. It's very obvious, actually. We know what's killing Europe. What's the solution? And he doesn't yeah, have that. He doesn't chapter provide two it. is always omitted, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, horrible. The, the bit where they might, although I would say I think the Overton window has changed a lot on the back of people such as yourself who years ago took those risks and now 
you know, things that the likes of me, you and Hugh and a lot of other people were talking about six years ago is mainstream now. And I think without me, you and 100,000 other small channels, I mean, mine was certainly smaller than yours, but, you know, I think that paved the way to allow people to slowly, you know, there's uh, on Twitter a lot, X, sorry, uh, recently. <laughs> Do you, do you think that's ever going to success? No, I do, well, I, I was actually thinking about this the other day, and I thought, I don't, I still call it Twitter. I can't imagine not calling it that. But you never know. Five years down the line, it might just stick. You don't. Everyone know. Everyone calls it Twitter. I mean, Twitter. X. That's yeah, it's what. Tw- I oh, think sorry, X. Should, yeah, that's they should call it. Yeah. It should be rebranded as that Twitter. Oh, I mean, X. That just that. Um, <laughs> Speaking of 42, there he is, my man, saving the day with a lady Godiva. Yep, there you go. Was your granddad alive when your gran met the man from her past? No, he was. He died a long time ago, so he wasn't around. There you go. Um, Dan, before we leave that, thank you, 42. I will read out. Um, I won't read out Super Chats and Entropies unless they're uh, all sorry. Unless they're relevant at the time, um, I'll, I'll read them out in bunches. Bunches of that one is an example. Dan, I just before we move off this uh, manuscript, I'm really, really interested in it. I mean, can you tell me a little bit more? So you've read none of it? No, not in person. Just I'm, all I'm telling you is what I've been told from my mother, who's re- currently reading it. It's about halfway through. Have you got any idea of the size of it? Oh, I mean, that's hard. that's going to be. Oh, I don't. I, no, I don't. I, no, no idea. I mean, it's substantial, but it's not like the Lord of the Rings. You know, <laughs> it's not. It's not a full on anthology. But you know, it's it's an it's an entire life basically. I don't know when it ends. I don't know if she was still writing until recently or not, or whether it just cuts off at a natural Magic. end point. I'm not sure. That doesn't feel so good. <laughs> oh, <laughs> um, yeah, imagine that. Yeah, I've got to go to the doctors tomorrow. <laughs> like maybe, um, maybe if I type it up, I'll I'll add that bit in just to make it more. Dramatic. Yeah, <laughs> give it that comedy ending. I think that's excellent. Can I ask the chat? 170 wonderful people in here. Uh, give me a one in the chat if someone in your family has done something similar to. Dan's grandmother, someone in your, not someone who's a writer or a journalist or anything, but someone who um, documented their life. Uh, I'd be interested to know if anyone else has been through a similar, um, similar situation. I mean, I, I, you know, Dan, I have a tendency to excite myself over this and think that it could be what you, you, you might message me in a couple of weeks and go, you're not going to believe it. But yeah. it might actually be worked at the Bakers from six to eight. It were called in Bakers. Yeah. Add that job. And then you're going to say to me, no, it, it, it was it was just not that good. I don't mean that in a nasty way. No, but... no, I think you're right. I think most most people's lives are quite mundane. And the reason why it's interesting to me and, and to you apparently is because she took not not everyone takes the time to actually sit down and say, okay, I'm gonna try and document the life that I've lived, no matter how mundane and boring or normal it was or ordinary. I'm just gonna do that for the sake of documentation. That, that, in, really- that in itself is quite interesting to me because I don't think a lot of people even think about their own lives or their own mortality. I don't think people walk down the street and think, you know, I'm gonna be dead one day. I don't well, I-, I don't think people even acknowledge that fact. So I think that's, even... what cult, that's why culture exists, to distract you from that reality. Yeah, that, that very where, real reality, that, sure. Where culture came from, to fill in that space between realising you're mortal and that coming to pass. You know, we're, <laughs> yes. the only, we're the only sort of species that does things that aren't eating, sleeping and fucking, really. And that's because we suddenly were unfortunately aware that <laughs> the clock's ticking, man. And, it, you know, we laugh at it, but it's brutal, especially as I age, you know. Like, in the mornings now, my eyes don't work for a good 10 minutes. If someone texts right. me, I'm sitting there like this going, I hope this ain't important. 
<laughs> no, I, I think about death quite often, not not in a morbid way, but just in a way that, yeah, it's it's going to happen at some point. Unless yeah. I get the Neuralink by Elon and it <laughs> makes you live forever. I don't know. Oh, fuck that. But, uh, fuck. but it's good. You know, it's going to happen at some point. And I do think about it quite often. I was like, well, you know what? It's, you know, when you think about that final inevitable end, you look at regular things in your life, just shit you're stressed about. And it kind of makes it a bit easier to deal with. Just like, ah, you, fuck it. You know, yeah. Aldous Huxley famously on his deathbed got his wife to go and get his stash of LSD and he he, he, he went out tripping. Oh, well, that's, that, that's pretty good, eh? Not, not it bad. takes some balls, you know. I mean, I think that takes some balls. Um, Dan, you said something in passing back then that I I think... I, I want to question you on it. You said something about most people's lives are... I don't know if the word you used was mundane or some, something similar to that. Do you really think that? I, 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 mean, I, I mean, relatively speaking, I get, you know, you're right. But at the same time, most people, I mean, whatever you define as normal, most people have normal lives. Most people go to work, have a family, Okay, you know, uh, yeah. that kind of thing. You know, the days of fighting in a world war are done. You know, that was back in the day that that generation had those stories to tell. Yeah. Uh, these days, it's quite... People are very comfortable now. I'm just thinking my generation, millennials, yeah, when, we, when we are in our 80s, what, what will we have to say for ourselves? What stories will we have to tell? Okay, now steady on. <laughs> I'm trying to, I've been trying to do it for 50 years. <laughs> um, interestingly, on that point, I said um, there were, on Libs of TikTok, I'm sure you know what Libs of TikTok is. Um, yeah, sure. We talked about yeah. that last time we were on. There was one, there was a, a trans person on there, and there, um, Linda, lovely to have you on the firm for seven months, and yeah, always peace in Mandom, and every land on, of course. Thank you, Linda, hope you're well, darling. Um, uh, did you see what Galileo's tongue said? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Brilliant. Oh, what was I talking about now? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. There was this trans person, and there, listen to this claim. I mean, as far as a claim goes, it's just, well, unsurprisingly, you could say, absurd. She, he, I don't know, I'm not dead naming or whatever, Susan. Um, she, he said that she was more of a man than a man, right, because she had to work for it. She had to have the hormones. She had to have the surgery. She had to <laughs> shave the skin off her arm and, you know, all that luck. So right. because she actually done something that you were just given at birth and didn't have to work for, she he is more of a man than you, right? So I, of course, there you go. That's the right way to get through life. I said just for a a little joke, a little Twitter tee hee, Twitter, I mean, X tee hee. <laughs> I said, have a fight with a 15 year old boy and yeah. see how man you are. <laughs> yeah, right. that's a good now, way of putting it. Yeah. Right. But, 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 I mean, you're not as old as me, but you are older than the younger people. And a couple of people pointed out to me, well, most 15, a lot of 15 year old boys these days you know it would likely be the two of them going nee, nee, that, is, you know? that is also true yeah yeah, yeah. Very and true. so i think i think the distinction i should have made was fight a working class 15 year old boy we'll see how much of a man you are well put but, it this way where i live in my town it's really funny where i live because there's literally a bridge that separates the town into two halves it's a it's a train line it's a big bridge <laughs> And on one side of the bridge, you get more civilized people. On the other side of the bridge, it's full of chavs and fucking scumbags and all these council estate, you know, all these people. So, yeah, get someone from that side of the bridge, literally the go. wrong side of the tracks, and fight a tranny. It'll be good. Yeah. Okay. We, can, we can stream it live. You're going to have a heartbeat. Of, you're going to have one hell of a moment when you pick up your nan's manuscript and it's called The Wrong Side of the Bridge by Dan's Nan. Imagine that. 
Wouldn't it be great if I if I was reading it and she's like, and then I subscribe to the iconoclast on <laughs> well, why not right. though? Yeah, imagine that. Well, she didn't know how to use a computer, so I doubt that's gonna happen, but you know. I was always proud of Daniel until the Daily Mirror woke me up during <laughs> until he became a huge fascist. <laughs> <laughs> it was shocking at the Women's Institute to hear <laughs> my grandson was a Nazi. <laughs> we both we're, we're both in major newspapers being accused of that. I mean, that's in history now. It's shocking. It's just a that's absolute. Funny. Well, the, the funny thing about that is, I actually, I mean, I keep the story short. I've got a, I've got a few friends that I haven't, that I haven't. Well. Yeah, I've got a few friends that I haven't seen for a couple of years. And like, <laughs> what, what, what have you been up to? And I, and I just, and I, I just send them the link to that article. Like, yeah, there you go. I'm like, oh Jesus! Wow. <laughs> it kind of explains everything really quickly. It's I'm quite thankful for her, actually. It's really that kind of makes sense. Uh, I, I, I assume you're trusting that they'll that they don't trust the media or. Or well, is it, they, or it's almost yeah, like a litmus I mean, test, isn't it? If if they don't get back to you, you're like, well, uh, well, they're yeah. kind of, I don't know. I mean, I've I've always had a small circle of friends in my life, and they they're on the level, you know what I mean? They may not be fully on the level, but they're not like assholes. They're not going to cry about it. I thought that with a couple of my best friends. Now they're not. I've got best friends from university and best friends from the comedy circuit. Who are more who I met when we were more sort of mature, but kid, my best friends that are sort of from my childhood, they didn't take all that at all well, you know. And it got to the point where it's the you need to stay off of social media, Dangerfield, you know, it's gone to your head. <laughs> and that's just it's so insulting. What I read a Facebook post and decided that there were certain things probably not that good for the west and we've made the friendships back but that line's always there now you know and we're having a reunion next year um one of them's inherited six million pound and bought a manor house his missus inherited it and well, good for him manor house. yeah no it, could, it couldn't have he's actually a lovely bloke but we're going to have this in this sort of reunion. And we've been through a lot together. You know, that was like the Glastonbury years, the squatting years. We grew up in the same town. But, you know, if, if anything gets mentioned, if, if unfortunately we're, I don't know, we could be doing something and immigration gets mentioned, there'll be like an odd silence. However, <laughs> I have noticed that one of them, more so than the other, has been starting to send me things and it's weird that they shock him, you know. He's like, hey, did you know that so-and-so, uh, apparently, according to government figures, this group are committing this amount of crimes? It seems ridiculous. Yeah. And I'm sort of like, oh, you know, I have to tread really carefully. I can't be like, yeah, I told you that six years ago and you stopped talking to me. It's, well, it's, of, it's, almost, it's almost like you, it's in, it's, you're back in school and you're moving at the pace of the slowest kid in the class. <laughs> it's kind of that's kind of how it feels like because i mean you can attest to this and everyone in the chat i'm sure can as well when you're when you're really engaged in the politics side of things like when i had my channel in like let's say like 2018 the height of it when i was living and breathing and fucking bleeding and shitting it every single day and uh you'd just read news story you'd, you'd, you'd hammer the videos out you'd have conversations debates you'd be living it and then you, you get that out of your system then you come to the point of well, I've said it all. When are, when are the rest of the people going to wake up and say the same thing? And now that they kind of are, sort of, you're like, yeah, Jesus, I can't even, I don't even have the energy anymore. I told you so. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, fucking hell. And it's kind oh, of I like, see. you just, you just slow motion all of it. You don't have I the energy. I want apologies. Yes, yeah, same, same thing, bro. Same thing. Right. Okay. That's interesting. You know, I, I don't want them to say, oh, you know, you were right all along, but I, I, I would like a couple of people just to. What's the word I'm looking for, Dan? Just, to, it's not a difficult word. I'm just getting old. Just to acknowledge the truth. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That. Just, just, to yeah, yeah, just look, there's no shit. Yeah, you you, you believed something else. Now reality is the way it is. Just admit it and say, okay. Yeah. 
This is because it's it quite nasty when you know one of these blokes. He really looked after me when I was homeless, when I was in all sorts of trouble. If Ed, you know, if it got really bad, I'd ring him and he'd wire me a few hundred quid. That went on for like ten years, you know, and mm. just just. He knew what the money was going on. He knew that I was making bad decisions, but he didn't want me sleeping out in February or whatever. And um, he rung me a couple of years ago, and well, about three years ago, and he said, you know, some of the things you said on Twitter, and it was Twitter then, he said, he said you know, they've upset people who I love. And um, I, I literally had to say to him, I said, I don't hate anyone. And I don't. I, it's a waste of time. It's, it's of, of little use to me. Um, but, I, you know, I think, I don't need to tell you this, but there are realities when it comes to, you know, getting different cultures living together. And, and it's proving itself as more problematic than beneficial, substantially. And I'm, I'm talking to a bloke that I've loved as a friend for like 30 years, 40 years at that time, 30 years. And I'm av literally having to say to him, no, I don't hate all black people, I don't. So. Yeah. And like, it's not even ironic or a joke. He, I, he, he, what he needed me to say that to him. And, you know, I just said, I remember at one point, as a joke that went down like a lead balloon, I was like, come on, man, I support Arsenal, for Christ's sake. <laughs> he weren't <laughs> But he the, went yeah, by the famous team. white nationalist football team, Arsenal. Yes, <laughs> that's really you. Top of uh, the Premier League. Um, so uh, something else, Dan. So we'll get away from that. Me and you've been over that topic for God knows how many. Before, times. before we move on, by the way, I just want to say the last stream you and I did together it basically just annoyed everyone. Can you remember that six months ago when Hugh jumped on? Um, um, England is over. England is over. I think it's not the highest viewed stream on your channel at this point. No, uh, it's nope. it's up there though. We got, oh, I thought, I'm sorry. I thought I thought it was. I'm, I'm deflating. By now, yeah. it's at about ten or eleven thousand. But here's the interesting thing: after that, followed a spate of videos with very similar titles. Uh, what's his name? Reverend Simon Sideways done a video. England's England's own. It, was, it had almost the same title. I'm not saying copied me or anything, but it was literally within two weeks of that. He'd done a live stream, England's finished. Just just off his own back, not in reaction to what we did, just off his own I back. don't know, but it was within two weeks. But right. I haven't watched if, it. I don't know. If I, you know, because I believed what I was saying, um, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be that strange for him to think that as well because he's obviously feels the same way about certain things that, that that I do I mean you know the the comments were pretty brutal the three of us the the once loved three stooges <laughs> kind of got on people's nerves but thankfully for once Hugh took most of the flack <laughs> he doesn't give a shit he's got a huge back he can take the bullets and the arrows he doesn't care man that's that's what he's there for human shield I, I, I told him we were streaming, but I didn't send him the link because I I just I it, I thought we'd have a nice chilled one. You know, you can imagine Hugh crashing here in like half hour's time. What the fuck are you saying? <laughs> oh, well, it is Christmas. I mean, you don't want to meet that Hugh, I'll tell you that. Do you remember um, he used to come on with like with his like Christmas glasses and hat on? Oh yeah, yeah. Very <laughs> festive. Hugh, if you're watching, jump on. Come on, bro. Um uh, but that it's I wanted to mention that in the morning. In oh well, where he is. look, I'm sure I'm sure you can wake up and have a beer. Come on, uh, <laughs> that stream that we did though, I wanted to just bring that up because you're right. That I think you did actually mention that um, Simon Sideways and a few other people made similar uh, videos with the with you know a similar theme and tone to them, and they didn't get even half the flack that that you got. That's right. Yeah, and. Yeah. The reason for that is that you've got the you have always carried these strange hangers on these critics because of your personal lifestyle or what you did in the past. Yeah, it's like this guy, fuck this guy. He can't he can't say this. He's not allowed to say this. But then someone yeah. more um, approved, shall we say, is able to essentially say the exact same thing, and everyone's like, "Yeah, you're totally right." Yeah. 
Yeah, we're, we're on board. Uh, it's so fucking tiresome. It really is. Yeah. I, I haven't mean, watched that stream back since we first did it. I might have to do that and see if it... Are the comments brutal underneath, are they? Well, it's just... Obviously, I cop a lot. It's all right for you living out there. Well, hang on. Regardless of where I live, I'm allowed to have an opinion on a on a nation. You know? <laughs> I don't know where yeah, sure. I'm You know, I'm not... I, I, at no point did I say it's, it's fucked. Ha 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 ha! I'm having a right laugh over here. Yeah, yeah. Like, good. Have a good time staying in Britain while I'm living it up in Asia. You yeah, know? You yeah know, you that's know. not what you're saying <laughs> at all. Yeah, that, and, and I got a fair amount of that. Um, I remember once Hugh actually had to put out a public notice, as did Mark once. Hugh was getting so as as did you, if I remember rightly. Hugh used to get so many people emailing him. I think you're excellent. Your channel's excellent, but you've got to stop hanging around with that danger field bloke. He's a fucking asshole. Blah, blah, blah. Generate. Yeah, and Hugh actually put out like a, a public announcement. Look, <laughs> just fuck off. <laughs> yeah, I, I got some. Well, I, I didn't really give a shit either way. It didn't matter to me if people cared about it or not, you know. But uh, it's just interesting the the different reactions that you get compared to someone else who is essentially saying the same message. It's um, it's Ooh, unfair. It, it was the life isn't fair, is it, Chris? We all know that. It is. It is. I, I was thinking the other day about you know those sort of glory days. Brexit had happened. Trump had happened. PA was like something that felt exciting and was really going somewhere. Uh, COVID sort of came in, which weirdly gave in, gave the internet a bit more power because people were in, you know, everyone's numbers were going through the roof. I remember Mark streams were getting like six, seven, eight thousand on D live. Remember the weird D live thing and yeah, all these. I, tried, yeah. up. I, I had a, I had a D live account for a, hot little minute that didn't really work out <laughs> <laughs> never mind well hang on you set up an, a d live account i did what, i did one it? live stream on that it was after i got banned i did one live stream it was i think it was actually christmas eve and wow, just 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 shoot shit. the sh just sh you know shoot the shit and uh is d live even a thing anymore was it gone? I don't i haven't been there Who ever. Knows? I've got, not ever but for a long thing, now now you've got rumble which is well, I wouldn't say it's a, a full-on competitor to YouTube, but it has its own ecosystem that, and it survives very well, and it does very well for itself. And there's a lot of I money on it, Rumble. Isn't isn't the live like? Wasn't it meant to be a gaming stream or something? Yeah, the, 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 they they all they all have that kind of uh, identity. Oh, it's a it's a place for gamers, you know. I mean, yeah, look, look, look at Twitch for example. Oh, yeah. Twitch <laughs> Twitch was like a gaming thing, and you go on Twitch now, and it's just like women with their tits out. Yeah. You know, it's okay. It's a gaming stream. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. I mean, we've got a, me and Dan have kind of agreed not to talk about AI because it's, it's all we talk about offline. Um, and as soon as you talk, start talking about women, uh, it, you know, with this live video editing, it's going to, the internet's going to be a very different place in within a year. I mean, it already is. Um, but, before the earlier on today, me and Dan were talking, or it might have been yesterday. And as you know, people, the thumbnail, let me get a picture of the thumbnail. Hang on. If you haven't seen mine and Dan's stream on um on AI and you're interested in AI, go and give that a watch. You just go to my channel and oh, what's all this Elon Musk trying to get money out of me? Um, I, I can see another super chat has come through. I won't miss that, by the way. Oh, for God's sake, why is this causing all sorts of problems? Anyway, I made that image on um, Mid Journey because my thumbnails now take me two minutes to make rather than 30 minutes, which is nice. What did I call it? Xmas icon. <laughs> There you go. This, so, is great con this is great content, by the way, just watching you uh, browse your own YouTube channel. You. Fantastic. <laughs> I was, I was waiting to jump in. Should I jump in now? Should I say Did you see I... what Galileo's tongue said, Dan? Look, he's on fire. Look. 
Uh, yeah, well, I think that's most people here, to be honest. He was always the favorite member. Come on, we all know it. Oh. I don't have it, an ego. I, I I don't have an ego to try and fight that. It's you, it you it was the that. dynamic. Let's be honest. That's why Hugh didn't stream on his own. The Hugh's personal streams didn't do as well as the Free Stooges. I'm not having that. He's nothing without us, is he? That exactly. There you go. Um, what's going on here? Why can't I even share a screen? No, that ain't it, is it? That's not how you do it. Anyway, so I can talk while if Dan was to stop interrupting me i would have done this a long time ago Go for it. so i made this on mid journey and i said ah oh, for fuck's sake <laughs> <laughs> they do keep changing it there you go uh and i said i said to dan there you go picture of me and you and a couple of broads or something and dan said to me he said i've never really uh, what, what what did you say dan blondes aren't my type Never been into blondes, really. No. Ne oh, you've added, really, you cheeky little monkey. Well, look, <laughs> there's, look, there's added. always exceptions to the rule. We know this, but the rule remains. I've never been into blondes. Right. And, and then you mentioned, there. then you mentioned Marilyn Monroe. You said, yeah. "Oh, come on, Dan. You know into Marilyn Monroe." It's like, no, I've never been into Marilyn Monroe. Don't see the appeal. Bridget I mean, I understand Bardo. why people like her, but it's just not for me. You know, Bridget Bardo. Uh, same thing. Yeah. I mean, I'm not denying that she's an incredibly attractive woman. It's just not my thing. I mean, I used to believe in a type because I used to think I had one. But when you've been at it for, you know, 35 years and you look back over that, I used to quite, I used to like bucks and blondes. You know, that was my thing. Real like, usually doing the washing up in an, uh, on the estate, <laughs> I can't imagine why that became my thing. <laughs> that's but, such a um, sexist statement, fucking. Hell. <laughs> but I used that's what I used to see. Do you know what I mean? I, I used to go running or jogging, but not really. I'd just actually be looking at those lovely blonde housewives on the estate, and they're <laughs> usually doing house kind of stuff, and. Uh, but then as I got older, that changed, and then that changed, and then and then you you know, I, I don't so would you say you've had a type for a long period of time? No, I wouldn't actually. I've never had a type. If I look back on the girls I've gone blonde. out with, they're all very different, but I've the, the one constant is they've never really been blonde. And I don't know why this, that is. This is difficult because it's hard to say. Which of these are real women? <laughs> yeah, they, these look like mid journey girls. I don't know <laughs> like, who knows if uh, that's real or not. I mean, yeah, we've gone to Pinterest, so here we go, Dan. So you better have an Instagram or something and just find some thought, you know. Oh, it doesn't work. I have to keep that. I'm gonna have to sort that out if I expect Pinterest to survive. Have I really got to refresh it every time? So it's you're Pinterest not Pinterest is still a thing, Jesus. You're not Pinterest. Is that... That's not interesting to you, no? She doesn't... She She's AI. She has to be. She has she's to she's be. a mid-journey girl. She has to be. <laughs> I don't know why that's tickled me. She has to be. She she must be. Look, I can't tell anymore. <laughs> but exactly. No, that doesn't, that doesn't do it for me. I, you know, um, what's that actress's name? Blonde. Reese Witherspoon. Uh, you, you know Reese Witherspoon? Yeah, no, not for me either. Typical, either. like, you know, all-American girl, blonde. Just doesn't do it, man. I, I don't know what it is. Oh. Just no Little edge to it, Hello, you know? Chris and the Scrubs. Chris, Crimbo wishes. Thank you, Little Red. And to you. And to you, of course. Merry Christmas. You're... <laughs> 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 um, I mean, at the, even wait, if go they on, are... Go Go to the top, go to the top row. Oh, the brunette, the brunette on, and the far row. Uh, yeah, well, on, I don't know. Dan, I, mean, I can't even believe you're, you're pretending. That no, hang on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hang on. Hang on. Look at look at her roots. She's not a natural blonde. Look at the roots. Even She's dyed the hair. Her. That doesn't count. That doesn't count. It's even... <laughs> Okay, so we have to we have to put rules here, my friend. This does not count. She's a fake blonde. She's a fraud. Hang on, hang get on. A, get You're the down off the some fraud. scuzzy pub on the wrong side of the river, like <laughs> having trouble standing up at your seat because you've eaten too many packs of crisps at your local Weatherspoon. <laughs> and this bird says, "Have you got somewhere perhaps I could stay tonight?" 
I'm a French student and I have uh, lost my passport. And you're like, nah, go on, fuck off. I don't like blondes, especially not bottle ones. Especially you French blondes. Fuck off. Get out. <laughs> Come on. We want Hang authenticity on. here, my friend, that she is you, not a real one. You selected one of them, Dan. What one did you... Um, one so, the, the one on the far right is... I think she's brunette, isn't she? Like... That, hey, see, that stands out immediately to me, but she's uh, and the one below her as well. Oh yeah, but they're not blonde, are they? That's I know that's what I'm that's what I'm saying. So like all these blonde honeys there, and I'm not even looking at them. That's the point I'm making. It's just not my thing. Oh, I suppose it's interesting. Yeah, but when you say not your thing, does that mean if you were single, you wouldn't? I find that. That's that's the bit I you know when people say no nah, I don't like big boobs on a woman and I'm just like what so that would actually turn you off a woman if she was really beautiful really attractive you'll be like nah I don't like big boobs I mean maybe but if that is the case and that is a fetish you know you've lost uh, yeah. you've lost an attraction to females and you've just become about not you one it's just about a, a particular. Are you are you telling me that I'm not a man? You tell me that I'm. No, not <laughs> that's up, Dan. That's up to you. In this <laughs> in this free age, you can be whatever you want. Apparently, you know there was a thing uh, this year. I, I, this is technically a year in review chat, uh, stream, but you know we'll we'll get onto it. But can you remember about six months ago, there was a big cultural event. It was um, the film Barbie was coming out in Oppenheimer. Yes, um, Barbenheimer, right? <laughs> and someone on Twitter, sorry, I mean X. There you go. Um, someone said, and it went viral for some reason, someone said that Margot Robbie, obviously the actress in Barbie, is mid. Now, I'm well informed that mid means that, it just means that she's average, right? She's not that special. And everyone kicked off at this guy saying, Margot Robbie, she's fucking incredible, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I kind of agree with the guy. I think she's she's attractive, sure, but she doesn't have the thing, you know that that thing that you that you look for in a woman. It's just not right. for me. I don't know. There's just nothing there right. for me. Let Controversial me take, hot take from the iconoclast. Right, let me see. I mean, you say she hasn't got that thing. Let's see. Let me see if I can find the scene. Did you did you see the Wolf of Wall Street? I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> I mean, I don't tend to get aroused watching Hollywood movies, but that scene, and I, and I, feel, I think Margot Robbie's a, for a for a, for an attractive Hollywood sort of sex symbol. She's not up there. I'm, I'm with you on that. She's a very beautiful woman, but dare I contradict everything I've just been saying? She's not my type, but. When I saw that scene, I was thinking, oh, I must fuck Margot Robbie. Well, um, you you say that, and I understand why you'd say that. It's a very, very good scene for obvious reasons. But I think the person you actually want to have sex with is Martin Scorsese for making that scene the way it was. Because he's the one that fed you that eroticism. She was just a tool in that scene, Chris. Yeah, but that's, that's all I'm saying. Sexy, isn't it? I like that. You, you're calling her a whore. Are you call it, you're calling Scorsese a pimp. A little bit, yeah. That ain't helping your film career. It, that's worse than five years of the iconoclast. <laughs> no, I, I think I think Scorsese would enjoy that comment. Actually, he's uh, he, he's a good lad. But um, Let's have a look in, at in the bit. in the chat. Can people actually say if I'm talking bollocks here? I'm sure many people will say I am. But no, Margot. Not... I mean, Margot Robbie. She, she's an attractive woman, but she doesn't have that. Quality, no, I'm with you. you know? That je ne sais quoi. Well, that would make be the French yeah. thing. They turn you off. But yeah, I'm with you. She's not. She's not up with the sort of historical. Talk. She's no Bardo for me. Let's put it like that. Henry someone, Hill says, sorry, so, so, excuse me, Chris. Someone in the chat, Casa Calling, said Cameron. Oh, I'm lost. It. Cameron Diaz is way better. If you watch Cameron Diaz in The Mask, I think that came out in the early '90s, '94, I think. Yeah, she she's the exception to the rule. But that very specific point in time, she's incredible in that. But beyond that. I, no, no feelings towards him whatsoever. <laughs> Ludwig that. says, uh, "Scorsese, no tab." <laughs> <laughs> Each their own. Um, a couple more donations have come in. I'll deal with them in a bit in a group. Thank you, people. Much appreciated. Let's have a little look at this Margot Robbie scene. I'll have to mute myself, so you know. Can you show this on YouTube? This might be a bit much. 
Yeah, I, I might get yeeted, but I'm going to forward the first little boring bit. Um, it's on YouTube. The 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 problem will likely be the. Um, oh, actually, oh, I don't know though. I don't know if I can handle it. It might throw me. Yeah, well, you know the scene, people. <laughs> yeah, we know it. Click watch later. <laughs> um, By the way, I thought the Wolf of Wall Street was not as good as what everyone said it was. Well, the, he, we, and so we come back to what we were talking about um, at the beginning of this, well, not the beginning, but about your grandmother's um, manuscript because... The thing that done me, I enjoyed it. I, I, you know, Leonardo DiCaprio can act the fuck out of pretty much every character I've seen him act. Um, to I a thought, degree. I think he tries too hard sometimes. Did you ever see The Revenant, where he won the Oscar for that? I haven't seen it. No, I, it's not my kind of film. It, I, not... I think they gave him, they gave him, it's like, okay, Leo, right, okay. You, you ate a live fish. You ate a raw fish on camera. Great. Have the Oscar. The film <laughs> itself is, you know... It was kind of like a, a legacy award, but it, it, I don't know. I don't rate him as highly as others. Okay, that's interesting. He's like the Kai Havertz of Hollywood for you. Um, Football reference. No, so, yeah, I know. I, I I always try on my stream. You know, two people in the chat often respond to those references. <laughs> um, it's five in six at the moment, though. Amazing, if you include the Champions League. Now, um I think he can. He was great in the Basketball Diaries, which I read first. So I was glad to see they'd done a pretty good uh, um, film adaptation of that. But the thing with the Wolf of Wall Street. Uh, oh, and he was excellent in that Catch Me If You Can as well. True story of that bloke who just was a blagger. The thing about Wolf of Wall Street was he's seen as a hero, isn't he? This bloke who just made bucks, snorted coke, had loads of birds, had a ten-year party. But the geezer wrecked thousands of people's lives. Right. And yeah. there was this big backlash to the studio that made the movie. Like, you know, you taking the piss. You know, we ended up homeless on the off the back of that character that you're now celebrating. Uh, you know, I think a very dark movie. Sorry about the noise. My chair squeaks. It's not me farting. Um you know, I think there could have been a very dark movie about that bloke who was, you know, an obsessive person, a psychopath, a narcissist. And to show those things, you know, just by cutting off, shaving off a woman's head, a secretary for 10,000, I think there could have, been, could have been a movie that was a lot more interesting about someone like that who went to those extremes, who cared naught for the lives he knew he was destroying on his road to financial uh, uh, um, freedom. Yeah. Well, no, I, there's, I, there's I agree. One, uh, oh, I've lost the words, you know, um, exorbitance or something, you know, he, he just wanted more and more and more. And he trod on people, families, you know, Kids' babies were tossed out of the street because they couldn't afford to. Put, they, they they spent all their money on his one p all that penny shares business that he set up. You know. Oh yeah, the penny stocks. Um, well, when I was watching that film, I've only seen it once, but I didn't. You know, I'll watch anything Scorsese does, really. But when I was watching that, I thought, okay, there's another party scene. There's another scene with extravagance. There's there's more drugs. There's more girls there's more midgets being tossed into god knows what you know it, it was the same thing over and over again yeah and you're right though it didn't go deeper i mean i guess the message was oh this is what happens when you fuck around but it looked really fun for the average viewer so it's like what's, what's the lesson there i think that's this, my point. this guy this guy isn't your friend he will rip yeah. you off he'll steal from your grandmother He'll and do like Lee, Lee says, yeah, he was a yeah, thief. Exactly. Yeah. And, and there's consequences and there's victims and there was lots of them. Yeah, I mean, if you compare it to something like Goodfellas, and there are people out there who are fucking retarded who will say that Wolf of Wall Street is better than Goodfellas, which is crazy. Goodfellas is... You enjoy the characters for, for, for how they are on screen, but you're under no illusion that they're good people. They're not yeah, good people in any respect. They are, they're fucking killers. They will yeah. kill you. You're just and spending time with them and seeing their world. They're unstable, aren't they? They're not. Yeah, exactly. And they're psychopaths. 
so there's, there's a difference that. there. Yeah. Sorry, go on. No, no, I was, I was done, but that's the point. I think there was a difference in tone between the two films. I think Scott, I mean, Scott is great, but I think he didn't translate that as well as I wanted him to translate it with Belford, yeah. you know. Agreed. There's that lovely bit in um, The Sopranos where the lawyer figure is sitting around her table with her family. And, you know, she's an Italian immigrant or the daughter of one, I can't remember exactly. Mm. And she's talking about Goodfellas and the Godfather and all that and and the stereotyping of Italian immigrants and the younger people are like, the, the younger people in her family, if I remember rightly, they're sort of saying, no, man, it's cool. They make us look good. And 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 it's quite interesting because uh, Mario Puzo, wasn't it, wrote those books. Um, yes. The Mafia copied Mario Puzo's fiction. You know, the Mafia came to America uh, skin and thought, well, this is, a, this is for the taking, isn't it? Let's just, you know beat people up and take their money and then make them pay us to stop us beating them up. And that's the protection racket, racketeering. And and then when the likes of The Godfather came out and that, where they all was wearing all the flashy suits and there was this sort of Sicilian uh, mythology invented, well, they then copied that. It wasn't the other way around. And that lawyer says that, you know, that the, these blokes having these sort of $6,000 suits made and they're white, <laughs> white loafers right. <laughs> yeah you know, people Absolutely. used to stick car hammers in old old women's faces because their sons owed the money some in the I chat think... uh mick sorry mick j dub power I'm probably butchering Just that. Dub power, that one uh dub power okay uh love good fellas and casino casino is an incredible film have you seen casino by yeah. martin scorsese yeah. with de niro Really yeah. good film. After Taxi Driver, it's his best. Taxi Driver is my favorite film ever, by the way. But um, Casino is, I think, his second best film that he's ever made. I love it. It's great. Underrated. I think, Check yeah, out. and I think for reasons that we've actually just been talking about, that it, it goes a little bit deeper into the sort of broken psychology. You know, it's got those classic fairy tale tropes of loss and lack and abandonment. You know, the the the. Well, you just told me his name. De Niro's character really just wants to be loved and he ain't yeah. getting it. You know, he's exactly, yeah. all that money and power and you can't, she doesn't love you. Oh, sorry. If I, where have I lost the comment now? Sergeant Steele in the chat. Where is it? Yeah. I've that lost, one? I've lost. That's the one. Just out of interest, why are you talking about movies? We all know that the majority of it's propaganda. Well, look, I mean, you're not wrong, but. You've got to switch off sometimes. And we're talking about relatively old films here. You know, it's like I think you made the point, Chris, because you're you're a rampant Arsenal fan. You you love football, right? And we you and I could sit here, we could do a stream for two and a half hours, and we can yes. point out all the huge problems with football as a product, as a corporate yeah. entity, all the propaganda, all the messaging, all the agendas being shoveled into it. And I think you made a point on one of the streams we did earlier this year. You said, yeah, you can say that and you can give it up, but then you're giving up everything. You can't enjoy anything anymore for what mm -hmm. it is. And I think there's yeah. something to that. You know, yeah, films, are, you know, the majority of them these days, of course, anything by Disney, sure, propaganda, social politics. And Disney's but, tanking stock and Dis wise. Yeah, yeah, yeah Disney's, Disney's fallen off a cliff. Whether they care about that or not is another matter, but... Look, I mean, it's Christmas. Chill out. <laughs> but I, t I take your point. I take your point. But like, you know, you, if, if you you can look at the world through that lens, and you can say everything is yeah. geared towards that, and you've got to take some time out and just enjoy things, my friend. This is what happened to me when I um, studied the culture industry. Uh, an essay in. Uh, Hallheimer and Adorno's dialectic of enlightenment, and it's part of that whole communist thing where you understand things for what they are. You understand modes of production and 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 um, reproducing necessary social and class relations to maintain class distinctions. Yeah, I get that, but then I went through a fifteen-year period of not being able to enjoy anything. Because you can you can trace 
most things back to an uh, an imbalance of power and and um mm, oh, what are they called resources you know most things you can trace back to that the the thing with football that i try i i've said it a few times is you know if you agree that we're fighting a culture war you, if you give up something like football, well, that's territory. If we're gonna if we're gonna use the analogy of war, if you're gonna give up football because for this reason or that reason, well, you're just giving up territory. And how do you win a war giving up territory? I see an amazing little short early. I don't know if you know Mark Goldbridge. He does uh, this. Is oh football. yeah, the, the, the money yeah, guy. Yeah, He's great yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, really knows his stuff. He was talking about some of the oldest stadiums in in England and apparently I can't remember when it was but some of these stadiums have been there since like the middle of the uh, 18th century right and yeah. I was like fuck me you know I think uh, Sheffield United's got I mean it's not the same you know bricks and mortar but it's on the, in the same place yeah, um, I, yeah. I, I love those old football grounds there's not many of them left anymore but um yeah. The, they, they, they have that character and the, the history yeah. there. Um, I'm a Sunderland fan, and our old stadium, Roker Park, was opened in 1880. Just looked wow. at it, wow. and it got uh, knocked down in 1997. So that was I mean, that's a long time. And I remember yeah. going there when I was a kid. I was there for well, I went a few times. And the new stadium we've got now is you know it's nice, you know it's it's good, <laughs> but uh, it doesn't have that. That, that character about it that yeah. these old grounds have. And, you know, it's also financially required. If you're going to try and stay at least in the championship, you've got to be able to take more than 20,000 supporters in your stadium. Right, yeah. You sure. know, when Highbury, when it was announced that Highbury, Arsenal were moving from Highbury, everyone was like, no! <laughs> but yeah. it's just not feasible. But, you know, you go to some of those championship teams or even Luton, who are a Premier League team at the moment, you know, the old turnstile nearly fucking takes your nuts off. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Yeah. I enjoy it. I enjoy that. You but like your nuts being taken off by a big swinging. Hey, look, we're, we're all into different things. I'm there not into go. blondes. I'm into that. It's fine. There you go. Oh, what if a blonde woman was uh, the turnstile <laughs> operator? But... Yeah, they, they, you know, Nietzsche talked about this weirdly. Um, it's so funny in Cambodia, Nietzsche's trending nearly every day, and I've got no idea why. <laughs> it's so funny. I put it on for Twitter, formerly known as X or whatever it is earlier. I, I mean X, yes. Yeah, it, that's it. Twitter, I mean X. Um, is nearly every day it says trending in Cambodia, and then it's a really weird list like Nietzsche. Um, Pamela Anderson. <laughs> but Nietzsche talked about resentment and the French word res resentment, the French version, it, it literally, well, it doesn't, well, it does actually translate as to resense, to feel the pain again. You know, in, in the 12 step fellowships, they talk about resentment being one of the biggest reasons people get back on their substance of choice. Because if you can't let go of, former uh, previous pain you know the, the unconscious and, and trauma doesn't have a sense of time you're gonna feel it again and again and again and when i when i went and got indoctrinated on my master's degree i was only 22 when i started my master's you know it's fucking you know, really too young to uh, be indoctrinated with all that but I blame nothing apart from myself for my drug use and where it took me. But without a doubt, that sense that the you know, I believe I, I, I totally agree with Theodore Adorno's and, and, and Horkheimer's breakdown of the culture industry, how it works, what it does, uh, and and the power it has to do that. But you can understand that. But you cannot cut off your nose to spite your face at the same time. And let's let's remember that the likes of Adorno and Horkheimer fucked off out of Germany to live in America, which is you know the culture industry center. 
and they loved it. They were out playing tennis. They used to go to theme parks and all that. You know, if you if you are going to sort of if you're going to if you're going to cut yourself out culturally of things that you know are somehow working against you in terms of resources, power, control, etc. What have you got left? You know, there really is not a lot left because the system is corrupted. And that will that 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 ruins lives. I've seen it, I've been it. You know, you just got to let your hair down occasionally and just say, yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, you know, when, to, when me and my missus go to the cinema loads of times, but she I don't expect her to come along when I go and watch something that's cinema rather than just the pictures. So, you know, right. you know what I mean though. Like the other week yeah. we in, in in Phnom Penh, there's a, a cinema that's got a VIP. There's only 12 booths. And once you're in the booth, you don't know there's anyone else in the cinema. It's got like a sort of well, it's a booth. It's got fully electronic articulated seats that will lay right down. You know, you can go back. There's a pillow, a blanket. And that, that might sound weird in Cambodia, but there's air con, obviously, because otherwise <laughs> it would just be a fucking sweat lodge. Yeah. Um, they come around and give you free Coca-Cola and popcorn, and you can press a little button, and they bring you some more and all this. And it's like $15 for the two of you. So we go there just for the laugh of it. But weirdly we won't we now won't go to the normal cinema because you're sort of crammed in next to people and you know you're fighting for elbow room like you're on economy on an airplane and all that luck but last it was what was it about a month ago i said should we go to cinema tonight she said all right what's on so we we don't look at anything that's not in the vip cinema and i was like weird and she was like what I said, well, the only movie that's on today in the VIP is called Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers. Best one. Which I don't know how right I am or wrong I am about this, but isn't that about 10 years old or something? It's 20, yeah. 2002. Right. It's not, it is an old movie. I mean, it's not really my cup of tea. <laughs> I watched one of them back then, but she likes fighting she likes fantasy she likes all that shit and what she doesn't like is a lot of talking because the Khmer language is a lot of words you know well good like, luck it's three hours long this thing right and so the thing is if it's uh an english language movie and it's 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 uh subtitled in Khmer, it's just too many words for them to get it in and it just it flashes up and then the next lot flashes up and, you know, she didn't go to school. She taught herself to read when she was 16. So so I said to her, there's not a lot of talking. I said, there's a lot of swords. And, <laughs> you know, we went yeah, and sure. How wrong you were. But when I was a commie, there's no chance I would have gone to the cinema to see Lord of the Rings. I mean, I'm not putting my money straight in the mouths of the culture. I'm not feeding the culture industry. No, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. We had a lovely time, you know. It's just the way of things. Yeah, you, you should. You need to separate your. I don't know. I mean, you know, have you seen Ben Shapiro and The Daily Wire? You know what they're doing. They're, they've got their own film department now. They're making their own film. They're doing like a Snow White because Disney were remaking Snow White live oh, action, I... and and the actress was going around blabbing her mouth and talking all sorts of shit, and people were ragging on her. And so Ben Shapiro and The Daily Wire, are like, we're going to make a Snow White film too, and it's going to be just like the original. And it's, what you know, okay, but I don't want to have my entertainment choices dictated by personal politics, you know what I mean? Like, it's just I need to switch off sometime, yeah. And uh, I, I, I can't imagine going to see a Ben Shapiro produce Snow White, <laughs> I, I'm just, I mean? it, even though, know. even though I know, right? I know I don't like Ben Shapiro, but I know at the very least his version of Snow White isn't gonna have the fucking nonsensical Disney trans agenda in it but i still don't want to see it because i know exactly what it's going to be like you know what i mean i, I just can't i can't do it i didn't know any of this was happening i can't stand ben shapiro i can't stand who's that smug bloke who made the video about what is a woman who i did like for oh the the guy with the beard oh what's his yeah. name he's got a yeah. beard matt walsh yeah, I, 
I, I just can't stand it anymore. It's you know, it's like oh, oh well done. <laughs> You've seen that. You noticed that, did you? Um but filmmaking is quite an art. It's, as you know, it's quite a craft. And I, this is the first I've heard of this, Dan, what you've just told me, that they're setting up a film company. There's a real strong chance they could really fuck this up, you know. Um, even though Disney are cunts, they can make films, regardless of the politics. This could be very embarrassing. I just, I just don't like, I, I don't enjoy the where, and we'll get off this for people in the chat who, who are sick of this. But I just want to say I, I don't like where we are in terms of, let's just say broadly art, where you've got the evil corporate establishment, let's say Disney, doing their nonsense. So you have to have a reaction from the so-called based right wing in the Daily Wire. We all know that's not true doing a response to that piece of art and they're just competing and it's so polit everything's so political my politics injected into this piece of art versus your politics and just injected into your piece of art and we're going to go to war at the box office and see what people i just can't <laughs> do this i can't do it well, and, and man, can, can you make art and be politically neutral i'm not sure if you can i don't know if you can probably maybe not even subconsciously, maybe not, but um, but it, it's so overt. That's the problem with it. Yeah, it's, Disney. It's Disney is so overt, and Shapiro is so overt. And I can't stand it. When Barbie well, came out earlier in the year, Sh Shapiro, <laughs> he fucking on Twitter. Sorry, I mean X. Um, he uh, <laughs> he he posted something where he's like. Well, my team have demanded that I go and see Barbie to do a review video about it. It's like, yeah, sure they did. Sure they did, yeah. Ben. Yeah. You, had to be, you had to be dragged kicking and screaming to that, didn't you? You fucking... I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of all the really... This could be excellent for a cringe fest of right-wing jokes. I know. I know, man. Because the I problem is... I, cause, sorry, Chris, to interrupt, but I, I always said back when I was doing my channel, because I remember making a video about uh, the the new Little Mermaid film when it was still in production and obviously they cast a black woman to be Ariel in it. I think it's come out now. I don't know what, don't know if it did well or not. No. Uh, just just got for, just for, forgotten about like you know flopped. Of course, who would have seen that coming? But but I'm, I made this video in 2018 when it was still in like early production, and I said that okay, well, you there needs to be kind of almost like a countercultural movement in terms of filmmaking or music or whatever it happens to be. But now I look at it and think, actually, I don't want politics in entertainment in any respect. I, I don't, because think, it's, you, I don't it's, think we can get it done. I don't think it exists. But, but I, I know what you mean. There's going to be politics in it no matter what. That's just the way it's going to be. But when you make something with the intent of okay. putting in politics, okay. and it doesn't, yeah. matter, it doesn't matter if it's left wing or Ben Shapiro's idea of what right wing is. I don't want any of it. I just want the piece of the piece of art and culture there, so, so I can watch it and take it in and make my own mind up about it. I don't want to control things. I know way. what you mean. I know the distinction you're talking about. You're talking about tell stories, which is what we do as just a culture. tell stories, man. That's it. Yeah. That's it. And uh, yeah, and it's not over determined by political. Um, your political position, yeah. I mean, just 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 the idea of making a film is political. But for me, I think we're entering a really we won't do the AI thing, Dan, but it's hard not to because it is taking over everything. But we're entering a period at the moment, you know, people keep saying to me, Why are you why you want to be a writer? No one reads books. Well, more books are being read now than ever before, which is a really odd thing when you when people can watch films and YouTube and all that. And I watched a cracking documentary the other day about people, and this has been going on for 10, 15 years, people making feature films using their iPhones or, and Androids, I assume. You yeah, know, you only need a, yeah. Yeah, a couple of little bits of kit. But as the, you know, when the 13 come out and the 14 come out and the cameras now, are, you know, they're better quality than they were sort of, like the umatics of sort of like what's that 50 years ago you know it's feasible now with the with uh, 
an half decent laptop, a bit of a bit of editing software, a couple of iPhones, and a crew and good writers to to be putting out feature films. And I think I think that's going to start happening. I think. And 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 when there's also the the place to show them, you've got the internet. You know, everywhere's now. Like Substack started off as a writing thing, but now there's uh, the, the, you can upload video onto it now. Um, X has become a lot more video sort of uh, centric, not exclusively, obviously, but there's a lot more on it. Tucker you know, Carlson, you know, he, he's got he's exclusively yeah, on there you go. and it gets like I mean, millions of views. I think we're we're in a we're in a we're ent- we're not entering, but it's 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 mat- not what's the word? It's got to the point where it's actually happening that you can. It, it takes going to take time. It's still going to take a bit of money, but nowhere there's not that distinction there used to be. Where if you want to make a feature film, you're going to need at least five mil, you know, um, and you've got the places to show it. And I think that. That is a real cultural democracy, you know. It, it, you you don't need to uh, be Harvey Weinstein, <laughs> thank fuck, um, to to have a successful movie. It it's going to take a while for it to be accepted because people do need social proof, you know. When you that's why at the start of a movie, dum da da dum da da dum, the 20th Century Fox. We're 20th Century Fox. We've made loads of wicked films. Trust us. You know, it already before you've even seen the film, it's a number, it's a number six because it's 20th Century Fox, or this, or that, or whatever. Mm. And when yours comes up and it's sort of Dan and Chris's movie shop, <laughs> you really <laughs> got to work after that. But you as I told you, Dan, I've still got you penciled into uh what was it? Uh DP or something. Oh no, that's double penetration. DOP and edit my uh, the movie of my novel. So, do you, do you not want me to play you in the film? I don't think you've got it in you, mate. No, it's too much. I could I could make a could do a good spin on your real life character. If it was a film, by the way, who would you play yourself? Just hyper the word word no, fan. No, no. no way. Definitely so you get someone not. in. So it's such a weird. I mean, when Eminem done it in Eight Mile or whatever it's called, Six Mile, I don't know. That's Eight brand name, in, in twelve and a half kilometers. Um, <laughs> it just confuses the issue, doesn't it? What is this a documentary? I don't know what's happening. The what I would do is leave it to people who can do it. You know, that's oh, what I would do. Yeah, I sold the option to my first novel, but I don't think that contract. Um, you could wipe your ass on it. I got a fair amount of money for it, but the bloke who bought it's just like a homeless bloke now or something. Oh, well. Fuck I hope he's not watching this. He might come chasing me. I'm ready to make the movie. It's time. <laughs> but I, I uh, when I saw about, you know, you, you know, you can get lovely little bits of kit for your iPhone now that you, you know, like sort of, uh, you know, all that stuff that you put around your waist so it's all balanced and you can do all those proper shots and, you know, that's amazing. Absolutely yeah. amazing. Someone in the chat said Russell Brand can play you. That's a good idea. That's so fucking cheeky. Good <laughs> idea. <It's> so <laughs> naughty. Um, By the way, uh, it's become that point in the stream where I need to take a midstream slash. Go on, Slash. Give, I'll me, deal give me two with minutes, me. and then uh, we can talk about whatever you want. Maybe the chat can contribute. All right. All right. Well, we're nearly... Um, it's nearly two o'clock in the morning. We'll do it's four. We'll do another 20 minutes, Dan. You good with that? Oh, he's gone already. Look, he didn't even wait. Couple more super chats that have come in. Much appreciated, people. Uh, Henry Hill said, Merry Christmas. No, Merry Christmas. Chris, Dan, and all the scrubs. I'll remind Dan of that. Nice one, Henry. Much appreciated. My man Jared there said, Merry Christmas. Bless you all. Nice one, Jared. Hope you're well. 42 said you would not catch me and our Mac making political. Hey, you, I see what you've done there. 42, I see what you've done there. Thank you, mate. Hope you and the missus have a, a cracking Christmas too. Um, I think my point is with all that, it, it you know, any production and consumption, any whether it's a hamburger, a movie. A football match, 
it's political. It has to be because you're supporting it by by paying for it or not paying for it or talking about it in this way or that way, you know. Culture is political. Art is political. It's very... You, you know, it was my art teacher who's been on this channel three times, you know, and he was a mentor of mine. That was on my bachelor's degree. And it was him who taught me, you know, he said, if you're going to make art, make it have a function, make it mean something. You know, if you're expecting people, if you're expecting to take money from the Arts Council, which is people going out and breaking their backs, working hard, and you want a bit of that to make art, it's got to fucking mean something. And he used the example of, what is it, the Lady of the North? I can't remember. And Anthony Gormley's sculpture. And I actually think that's an excellent piece of work. You know, it's a symbol of the North. And, and it, you know, that huge sort of iron uh, metal sheep angel. I think it's a, you know, that will be, that will stand there for hundreds of years. And it, it, it's up to you what it means, you know, but... I think as a celebration of the North, it's a, it's, a, it's a good piece of work. But, you know, people are paying for that by working. And it was him that taught me that, right, that tutor. And then about 15 years later, that must have been 20, 25 years later, when I had him on this channel, before I had him on, I was talking to him about the historical, cultural and political function of art. And he said, he said, can't it just be beautiful? Can't it just be something that people look at or hear or touch and it'd be nice? I was like, you come. <laughs> you sent me up a wrong path. He said, no. He said, I'm just now offering you a, another angle. I'm back, by the way. Why are people in the chat mentioning the Angel of the North? What did I miss? I was talking about when I was at art school, and my art tutor, sorry, Dan, let me just do this because I've done it. Very kind of you people. I really appreciate it. Ludwig says, have a sherry or two on me. Merry Christmas, Chris. Much love to Scrubs, one and all. And also, uh, Dan, um, Henry wished you uh, a, a Merry Christmas. Fantastic. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not seeing a penny of this, by the way, but thank you. <laughs> well, how am I going to pay for the movie? Jesus. Um, He's um, my art, I'm going to say this again, but all the scrubs just heard it, so I'm going to say it very quickly. When when I was doing my BA in uh, uh, art, he said to me, you know, if you're, if you're expecting people to pay for your work, which is usually Arts Council money, which is taxes from people who are out breaking their backs, bricklaying or, you know, work, actually working, he said it's got to have a function. It's got to have a historical or cultural or political function. And that, you know, that has stayed with me till today. You know, when I'm writing my manuscript, I think about what is this book for? Or oh, sorry, I, I get in trouble for calling it a book by my editor. It's a manuscript, it's not a book. He goes, book, book, where's the book? He said, it ain't even been printed. <laughs> right? And he, he don't mean printed. He means like, it's just a digital thing. Anyway, um, and if, when I say novel, he goes, no, it's a fucking novel. <laughs> he said, what, that one like 40 years ago? Anyway. Um, is this the guy I that think, had the heart attack, by the way? The, the yeah, you can attack. see yeah. why, right? <laughs> right, there you go. He, um, so my art school tutor has been back on his channel, and I said to him once, just before he came on, I said about the political, historical, cultural function of art, and he turned the tables on me and said, can't it just be beautiful? And, and, and so, you know, that's why people in the chat are talking about the Angel of the North or the Lady of the North. And, and, I, and I said, I actually think it's a good piece of artwork because I think it gives, um, it's an, it gives the North, an, that part of the North, an identity, something to be proud of. And I think it will be up there for... Oh, wow. well, I'm, I'm, so, I'm so glad that a rusty angel is what we needed to be represented in the world. Fantastic. No, uh, you know, I, you know what, by the way? No, no, I, I think I don't know if anyone else in the chat is is from the northeast, but when that first went up, oh my god, what was that like the late 90s or something? In my memory, it seems to be about that time. Um, a lot of people were most people I would say thought it was a joke, they didn't like it at all. It was like, yeah, well, what's that got to do with anything? Inevitably, yeah. 
Yeah. An angel, what does that mean? For It doesn't represent the northeast, that area of the world. doesn't have any but does relevance. It not? Does it not? Look, loads of sheet metal I uh, <laughs> riveted and welded together. <laughs> No, Is, are, aren't, aren't, the, aren't the wings old, like airplane wings? Is that isn't that what they are? And they stuck them onto. Know, it? I don't know that much about it. Either way, I mean, I see it probably three or four times a week, just driving by it. Uh, well, I, I don't even acknowledge it anymore. It's just there. It's kind of like a rusty tower. You don't. I, even... You know, when you look at some of the artwork, especially in London, that gets commissioned, that's taxpayers' money. Mm. And you just think, you can't, if you have there, you spend the taxpayers' money on that. When I first <laughs> was going up, I think I was going up to Newcastle, because you see it on the off the side of the motorway, didn't you? And when that yeah. thing loomed yeah. over the fucking thing, I thought it was spectacular. I really liked it. Oh, well, I mean, that's, I, I'm, I'm glad that you think that. That's great. If, uh, and I understand that people, you know, I th this is going to come across somewhat, Snob, uh, snobbery but I think I did do seven years art school so I do look at it differently in some respects but I think after the initial arguments I think people come to I think I, I, I would say and it's it's absolute conjecture um, no speculation sorry you suggest taking that down in about 50 years. I reckon the people up there will be right. Well, no, 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 no. Oh, well, I I th you're definitely right about that because generations will have grown up with it and it'll be all they've ever known. And it'll <laughs> be like, oh, you're taking away our uh, local neighborhood and all that. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. yeah. Grego says it should have been called the slag of the north. But, uh, there's, but there's plenty of them. Don't you worry. Well, it, Otto, it is political in a way, though, isn't it? Because it's about industrial steel manufacture, isn't it? You know, there is an element of that. And where did that go? That that used to be the the northeast. That's how they made a lot of their money, and it got with like most manufacturing got shipped out to initially colonies and and then Asia. You know, I'm in I'm in what's considered a third world country, as Morgoth once kindly. Um, screamed at me on a stream <laughs> and then he found out that keith woods was in vietnam <laughs> oh, but, um, but my internet is 600 mbps 600 and why am i telling you this is oh, that yeah. good or not? By the way, is that good or not? I'm not really technical. In Soho, I, in, in Soho, the media center of the United Kingdom I had 40. All right, so it's much better then. I would suggest there's only about two or three other people in the chat who've got internet that fast. And that's a, a guess, but it's really fast. Yesterday, I downloaded four uh, movies in about 15 minutes, uh, all 1080p, you know. Interesting. Wh which films were they? Just out of interest. Well, because I went on to I, I went on to Twitter, I mean X, and I said, yeah. look, I need some movies, uh, go. I've got loads of suggestions. And then Semiagog had been asked a few months or a few weeks ago to list some movies he rates. So he linked me to that thread. And there's about 30 in that. What did I get? I got Moon, which I hadn't seen, which I watched. Oh, uh, Sam, Sam Rockwell. Yeah, I've seen that. That's it. Yeah. Interesting story. I watched Freaks, not the original one in the circus where they used those real pinhead freaks and all that. It's a sort of a sort of low low grade sci fi, but enjoyable enough movie. Um, what else did I watch? Oh, I've got another, I've got one still in the bank. Arrival. Does anyone ever anyone watch yeah, Arrival? The, the aliens and the language. Yeah. I've seen that. I don't know. And then the one that I watched today, uh, Day of the Jackal, of course, the original. I don't know if they've really oh, made nice. it. But... I've got a recommendation. Hugh put me onto this. Uh, Dragged Across Concrete. That's hard to oh, say. I've seen it. It's, uh, uh, oh. uh, well, uh, uh, Mel Gibson, isn't it? He's a dodgy oh, yeah. it's, old it's cop. Great, yeah. Wow. Yeah, Love fantastic it. movie. Well, there you go. Look, you know, that's cinema to me. It's got that old noir feel about it, hasn't it? You know. By the way, yeah. if, you know, going back to what someone said earlier in the chat about films being propaganda, just watch Mel Gibson films. Are you good? 
don't worry about it. You know it's coming from a genuine place if he's in it. <laughs> good old Mel. <laughs> yeah, very good. Well, there you go. Look, Grego's rocking 48. I mean, the thing is, you can get through most things with 48 megs, but I only paid for 150, and I get this email out of the blue where they say, oh, sorry that you've only had 90 megs for the last two weeks as, comp as a compensation for the rest of your contract. Uh, we're giving you 600 upload and download, and my contract's another two years. I was like, sweet. Oh, very nice. Otto says, I feel Mel is anti-English with his films. Well, Braveheart <laughs> and I'm guessing The Patriot, where he's in the, it's a, uh, the American Revolutionary War. So, like, yeah, the, the yeah, the antagonists are, are the English in both of those. But look, embrace being the antagonist. We're always, the bad guys are always the coolest characters. Just embrace it. I'd say Mel yeah. Gibson overall is our guy. So don't worry about it too much. Yeah, I, I, I would suggest that as well. Yeah. Um, just that thing about th that um, when I was in Soho and I couldn't believe how slow my internet was. You know, I do like watching movies. I do like watching uh, paying for the football. <laughs> but out here, you can just watch anything. You, if, you know, you just can. Like yeah, sure. the new, the new Jack Reacher series. I, I've really been enjoying that. I mean, I don't know if you watch any of that. Uh, it's a bit I, of a dirty I, secret pleasure with me. I read a lot of the Lee Child books. I haven't seen uh, the series. I saw the Tom Cruise. I think I saw one of the Tom Cruise films. But, yeah, uh, and it's just embarrassing because Jack Reach is like six foot four and about the same wide. <laughs> <And> when, <laughs> when I saw it, I couldn't believe it. I was like, this is this this is like a joke. Uh, I thought I thought it was like a parody that Tom Cruise was going to play Jack Reacher. Because right. in the books, he's almost <laughs> superhuman. But the bloke who plays him in the series, you're like, no, that's Jack Reacher. I'll tell you what, Dan. Don't download the first series from Pirate Bay. That would be awful. It's, it's a great watch. One in the chat if you've enjoyed the Jack Reacher st uh, series. Are it you does... saying that, that there's actually a strong white male competent protagonist in that yeah. show? And he's yeah. actually good at what he does? Are yeah. you serious? It's, it's not. It, 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 and, and there are some strong female characters in it, but they have realistic limits. It's quite interesting. Do they have nice tits? Come on. Do, that, that's what we really care about. If they're your type, I guess. So not blonde then. Okay, good. There, there's a, there's that. Oh, the, in the first series, the bird's Roscoe, and she's actually very hot. But the new series only dropped like three days ago. and uh, Only dropped? I don't know do, what. Do, do you use that? that felt so weird. Can I, okay, can I pull you up on this, right? Because... There's a pet peeve of mine, and I was going to bring this up earlier, but I didn't find a way to get it in. You know when people, when you listen to people talk and they've got uh, language ticks that they have, just uh, things that they do, they probably don't even realize yeah. that they're saying. Um, when people overuse the word literally, yeah, when it's when it's figuratively, time. especially, yeah, exactly, yeah, all the time. <laughs> I think the new literally is obviously. If you watch uh, yeah, any, yeah. everyone everyone says obviously all the time in every single uh, sentence that they say. If you watch uh, an interview with a footballer after a game, both yeah. the interviewer and the footballer just say obviously about 20 times in one sentence. Now, it's I'm, fucking insane. I'm going to cut it. them a bit of slack because you and I know they, they've just run themselves ragged. They've been concentrating like crazy and they cannot say what they think because they're supporting a brand and advertisers. So that it's just the same old stuff, isn't it? You know, you, they, I understand. You know, yes, they I get understand asked that. The yeah. yeah, but I, I, know, I know you're using it as an example, but the, 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 the proto version of obviously was basically. Yeah, and that's it, another one. And whenever anyone says it to me, I stop them and I say, no, you can give me the complicated version. <laughs> and, you know, it'll be something really simple. They'll be like, do you want a drink? I go, what are you having? Well, they go, well, basically, there's two lagers. I go, no, you can give me the complicated version. <laughs> just just say lagers. the lager. What do you want? Yeah, what do you want? <laughs> Fucking hell. No, I, I – and you know what? I've, I'm not perfect. I'm not a perfect being. I fall into this as well without even realizing it, of course. Um, but what you said – dropped that 
that term. Yeah, it felt weird. It I just weird. can't because that isn't that rapper language kind of uh, um, street language. Oh, I'm gonna drop this album tonight. I'm dropping the new I trailer for felt, this. Just um, dropped. Like, oh no, I can't do it. When I said it, I felt it's a bit. DJ, isn't it? And then he dropped the new so-and-so track and, you know. Oh. I'm not crazy. I'm, I'm saying we all uh, fall it's into fine. it. But it, it, it's like yeah. osmosis. These language texts just come into your brain. And you but it help. is. We are also in a position where technology is moving so quickly. How do you how do you explain what's happening? Like when I'm trying to talk to people about AI who know nothing about it, you know, language represents thought as thought represents itself. And I'm sort of there going, right, so imagine a sh loads of sheets of tracing paper. <laughs> sort of like, what? You, you, you're making sexy women. Huh? You're drawing sexy women. I'm like, no, it doesn't. Uh, so uh, how how would I, how, what would I, have, how would I improve that? It was released, it, the, the new season was released a couple of days ago, there you go. That'd yeah, or it came I out. Did, I yesterday. did feel it when right. I said it. To be honest with you, yeah. No, I, I get it, man. It's a, I every single day I have to check myself because I don't want to be. I don't want to use the word obviously, literally, basically, or dropped ever again in my life. <laughs> I can't do well, it. Yeah, uh, yeah. If I, I I do occasionally make that mistake in my manuscript, I play with a lot of those tropes, and it's really complicated because after spending like 18 hours working on it i'll then go out and i'm not sure whether i'm being ironic or not and it it, it you know it's, it's absolutely ridiculous people who've read my sub stack link at the top of the description will see <laughs> things like there's bits in some of my shorts where you know it's very sort of terse in your face writing and then mm. i'll say something just like and i as the sun gently dropped over the horizon and the, the autumn <laughs> leaves, blah, blah, blah. And then at the end of it, I would say, this is writing. You know, yes. I would say, you know, because that, that's considered a voice in writing, the right, that sort of romantic, sort of 100 years old voice that most people who say, I'm going to write a book, you know, mm, I woke up in a, in a cold <laughs> dawn. The room felt smaller as I professionally someone said to me once they professionally put their shoes and socks on what does, like, that, even, what does that even mean what drop does that mean? the adjectives drop the superlatives just tell me what you want get into your real voice when you first start writing is one of the hardest things to do by the way i'm just interrupting because glass here who is one of my most favorite of all scrubs She's quoting me from a from a another YouTube channel, and she knows it. And Sparkles was doing it. There's been a there's been a weird sort of overlap of my uh, my YouTube life that I've kept separate for so long, but I needed a bit of help. So Sa Sergeant Steele in the chat again. He said, uh, "I think the word like is much more annoying than basically or obviously." That is it's true. It's people unique. use like where there should be a pause or silence people just fill that with like and it feels like it's uh an anxious you just thing said it. no but it feels like it is an anxious thing i, I wasn't using like throwing it away like, you know when people it, say like 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 you know i'm, yeah, I'm yeah, i go yeah. to mcdonald's because like i enjoy eating burgers and like i i like sitting there all oh, that shit it just they use it where it doesn't need to be it's like an anxious it's, tick. It's like an anxious tick. Fucking hell. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, it's interesting because in Infinite Jest, David Foster Wallace's last novel, and it's a thousand pages, you know, it's a and it's a hard read. And he's considered by the, the sort of literary um, critics and a lot of writers, myself included, I think it's one of the best novels ever written. But he says that as as the uh third person narrator quite a lot you know he'll use it like american sort of youtubers use it which i think is sort of what you're saying yeah but in in the 90s it the, know what i mean was the worst man those kids now i'm going out you know what i mean like because it's this great time out there you know what oh I mean? yeah, like, you know what yeah. I mean? like, and you're just sitting there going, no i don't i don't because you, you just keep saying the same fucking thing you're confusing me 
Well, in in the northeast, we have this, and I don't know why this is the case, but we will say a sentence in the north, and and we'll end the sentence with like. So we'll say, yeah. oh, oh, it's really warm outside today, like, and it doesn't make any sense, but we do that. But that's different, I think, from people who use like as a filler word for them not being comfortable enough to commit to what they're actually saying. That's really interesting. So you're suggesting the other version of like is the fear of silence. Yeah, so I think so, yeah, in my opinion. I, I really like it when I'm talking to someone and they just stop because they're actually thinking. You know, you can trust those people. You ask them a question and they'll be like, I just said it, but they will be. They'll be like, um, is it because, and you know, and that's, we should talk like that. But again, with shorts, with TikTok, with Instagram reels, you got 15 seconds, son, go. <laughs> and so people feel, you know, they feel like the dare is on the spotlights on you when you're not saying anything and you're talking. And so, yeah, so it's almost like a tick. I get that. Uh, Gregor in the chat says, Dan says, you know, is his tick and you're fucking right about that. I do. I Honestly, I hate it. I'm trying to stop that. You know, I'm really like trying to obviously stop doing that, literally. <laughs> you it's literally hard though. Didn't. Literally um, trying. I, I, the, near the beginning of this stream when we were talking about your uh, grandmother's manuscript. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Almost sensual. Sorry. Um um, you said ma'am, and it was the most northern you'd ever been. Ma'am, yeah. Well, the, yeah. Ma the ma'am's read it. I was like, whoa, he's I, I can never, I'll never be able to say mum. That doesn't seem natural to me. What, right. mum, the you or yeah. mom? No, M-U-M, mum. I'm definitely a mum, but I always... I'm ma'am, ma'am, M-A-M, ma'am. That's the way it is. I always get spell checked mom because the spell checker I use, Quillbot, is an American thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that fucker yeah. always spell checks me on um, um, gotten. It offers me gotten. You know, what, we, when? Hadn't got, we hadn't got there in time. No, that's gotten, mate. We hadn't gotten there in time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Jesus Christ. Jack says it is, ma'am. It is, ma'am. There you go. Well done, Jack. Literally is, ma'am. Like, <laughs> um, hello, Mark. Nice to see you, son. Dig. I don't know what dig is. What when you dig something? That's just American cop dramas from the seventies, isn't it? Dig. Digged. Yeah, yeah, it felt like it when Dan said it. All right. Um, let me just. I think there might be another donation. Um, no, there wasn't, but there was something someone said that I thought was interesting. Someone said they had Al, musician Al, as I like to call him, said he had, and it, Al, what what speed is your internet? That, that sounded incredible because my friend, the geezer I was talking about earlier, inherited the six mil and bought this beautiful manor house. It's got a fucking viaduct and its own lake, Dan. You know, that's how big the property is. Um, it, because of that, he hasn't got internet down there. And he said to me today, when he does the OOPLA or whatever it's called, OOPLA speed test, it, the, the little needle goes between two and five. Oh. That's uh, not very fast. Mark, Mark in the chat knows a lot, lot about that sort of thing. Mark, what would be an acceptable internet speed upload and download to just for basic internet what what would you need these days to to be using most platforms ah uh, in it was all over london there's a weird one in kamai nangai where you if you say to someone says something to you and you agree with them the the word in kamai for yes is ba and it finishes at the back of the throat it's not but it's ba but it also, it doesn't mean that. It actually sort of means, uh-huh. So you can sort of go, ba 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 And they all do. But then they'll go, they'll ba 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 ba
So my 600 is smashing it. I'm very happy about that. Grego in the chat is saying, all the kids are currently saying Riz, R-I-Z. And is that, that is. Is it pronounced Riz or? Yeah, Riz. I yeah, okay. I, think it, I think it's short for charisma because I've seen, you know, you talk, he, we won't get into this for the audience, but Chris talks to me on WhatsApp about YouTube shorts because he does it all the time. <laughs> and uh, I get served YouTube shorts on my homepage and it's always shit like this. Uh, oh, some yeah, guy rizzes this girl. He does, he, he, his riz is off the charts, all this shit. Hang on, I means, forgot. I think I've it just means charisma. That, oh, it's short for charisma. Okay. I, I could be wrong. I think that's what it is, but I'm not sure it's because I'm weird. old and I don't care. But I mean, <laughs> I, I do clear, care but... about our language changes, you know, because I don't want to go down the double plus good route. But, you know, so it's always interesting when you get something like that. Riz. I mean, I remember there was a, there was a, a period when people would say scuzz for disgusting. And that's the same as charisma. It's weirdly taking the scent uh, syllable, isn't it? I never, I never yeah. heard that. To be honest, never heard that. I actually take credit for inventing it, but the bloke Scott. that I take credit for inventing it from says it wasn't me. He got oh. herpes, right? He got this sort of weird mouth thing, and he <laughs> came back from the doctors and he went, "Fuck it." He went, first fuck I've ever had. I've got herpes zoster." And I was just crying my eyes out because he, <laughs> right, so, it, so he, he says he, we were all kids and he banged some bird in Gravesend. I mean, Gravesend, you know, what a place to lose your virginity. It's probably still there. Walking yeah, like I said, that's where my grandma was born and grew up. That's there you go. Thing. Well, I don't want to say, I don't want to make suggestions, Dan, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, who knows? Next Day, he's got a dose of something and he's like, oh, fucking hell, first fuck I've ever had and it looks like it might be my last one. And so being his supportive friends, we're like, yeah, it's that is probably syphilis or something. I send you mad. And so he's gone up to, we've all gone up to the GUM clinic with him and one bloke took a porn mag and when we are all sitting in this little room just to laugh at our friend having his first ever STD check, this geezer goes, hey, Dan, look at those. And he's going, no, fuck off, man, fuck off. We're <laughs> just showing him these hot birds. And then in the end, he went, no, he went, no, it's getting hard. And he said, and now it's starting to smell. And so he left. He walked out. He said, I'm not, I've, I'm going to have to get another appointment and not tell you lot. By the way, then, can I can I interject here? So the, the way you told that story, you said we were all laughing at this guy getting his first STD check. That implies that you all had many before then and I've it was loads. just the norm and it was fine yeah. and can i tell you chris i've never had an scg check in my life well, i've never had it in my entire life <laughs> i've yeah. had some corkers i remember going into the dean street one which is a walk-in well it was i mean middle of soho it's kind of busy <laughs> and uh i'd been i'd been oh man i've been to thailand for about four months and I'd been busy. <laughs> and so I, I think I've got a couple of genital warts, right? They didn't, I've had them before and they didn't look much like them, but I thought, you know, get them checked out. <laughs> Jesus, I've gone this is, already, is this in the book, by the way? Is this going to no, be? No. no? Oh, no. You've got stories to, to spend. I've got great. STD stories that are coming out, coming out my ass. <laughs> 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 and, and, so, so the nurse gets me on the bed, <laughs> and she she lifts it up like you know, gets a pulley system, <laughs> using gears to cope with the weight, and she's sort of fingering them, and she's going. Oh. She says, oh, "I'm going to get a friend in, right?" And so I'm thinking, "Here we go." So this bird walks in, and in my head, she comes in, and she's like, "Damn, she, she's hot as fuck, too hot." <laughs> To be a cock nurse, right? Like, She's a professional, Chris. You've been very disrespectful. <laughs> and when she comes in, I go, wicked, threesome. No, they didn't like that at all. They did not like that at all. Why would they? Well, I thought they would. I thought it would sort of break the ice a little bit. You know, I'm a bloke on a bed with my cock out, and there's two women sticking their fingers all over it. So I thought they would be, you know, no, they got the ump. 
And then it's just a porn or situation is like, oh, I've got <laughs> I've got some unsightly spots on my penis. Please yeah, have a look I, at it. Oh, by the way, we're going to end up having sex with each other. Uh, yeah, but they're what nurses out. That doesn't make with, any sense in the real world. They're nurses outfits with PVC and they had like knee, uh, over thigh boots. <laughs> Jesus. Anyway, it gets good, right? So one of the second one who comes in, the hottie, she's sort of going down my shaft. And is that is actually what she was doing, or was like your interpretation of what was happening? Yeah, of course, of course. Okay, she, fine. She, she was actually going like this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so she said, I don't think they are. She said, I don't think they are. She said, get his recent history off him, and you know, you know the rest from there. So she's left. So she said, put your trousers back on, sit down. So I sat down. And she said, um, how much intercourse have you had in the last three months, right? And I'd, I'd just been out in Thailand for four months, so I went, oh, right. Oh, dear me. But yeah, I literally went, right, um, 30 days in a month, average three a day, that's 90, 180, 200. I went, I went about 300. <laughs> she, went, she went, what? I said, about, about 300. She went, no, I'm not talking about masturbation. I said, no, nor am I. I said, but if you include in that, we're probably around 700. She said, I'm not including that. She said, why have you, are you, she said, are you a professional? <laughs> I, a professional what? <laughs> well, <laughs> there's a bed there. Um, sorry about the waltz. Um, I, she thought I was a sex worker then. I said, no, I've just got back from Thailand. And... Um, she sort of sneered at me and carried on oh, filling yeah. things out. And then she, but, but, but luckily telling the truth, she said to me, um, she said, she went out the room again. She come back. She said, do you want to know what they are? She said, that's oil. From, she said, when you go into those brothels, she said, do they oil your penis before? I said, yeah. She said, that's oil that's got in your pores. It's blocked them. It's hot out there. You oh, ain't dear. washing enough. Yeah. Because I got red sack syndrome, didn't I? From cheap oil. <laughs> red sack syndrome. Is that a real thing? Yeah. Because I got it. I woke oh, up right, one day yes. in Thailand and my, my ball sack was hardened red. Well, it was red sack syndrome. Feel free to look it up. I, my, most of the scrubs know that story. Oh, I'll Google that straight away, my friend. I'll do that right <laughs> now. History. So when your missus comes back, Daniel? <laughs> yeah. What have you been doing? But, before, before we will leave this topic and we'll we'll wrap it up now. But people, I've got a bloke who's agreed to come on this channel for a live stream, and he was we'll call it addicted. Although you know I I'm, I don't really believe in addiction, but you you know what I mean when I say it. He was addicted to the Mayfair sex club scene for about three years. Oh, you told me about uh, this. Yeah, it's a weird old world, Dan. And he's going to come on here. He'll answer all your questions and some of the stories. You know, it's proper eyes wide shut stuff. You have to apply with like photo, like thirty photos of yourself. You have to take a partner. You've got. To, they want bank statements. You know, it re you know, he, he was. Oh, it was crazy. But he he was so he got clean. And he done what I'd done. He got clean, but he didn't change his thinking. And so he, he had to distract himself in a different way. But whereas I was using like Chinese brass and going to Thailand a lot, he was just fucking anything. And he said to me once, <laughs> I said, oh, <laughs> and this bloke comes from money. Like his old man was like a fighter pilot in the sort of, in, like not the Second World War, but you know that they, you know, he actually got in. Uh, he got a place at Barclay when it meant something. You know, twenty odd years, thirty years ago. Uh, <laughs> not the father him. And he, he, I met him at Bar Italia for a cup of tea. And he come over. He went. He went. Fuck. You know. He went. I just pulled a right nice bird. He said, I'm meeting her in two hours. He said she only lives around the corner. I went. Where'd you pick her up? He went in the STD clinic. <laughs> hang on, oh, hang on. I said, "How did you? How did you make that happen?" He said, "Well, we started looking at each other, and before I left, I just scribbled down my phone number and said, text me if you're interested.'" 
<laughs> oh, that sounds uh, very much like Russell Brand's pickup technique in the. Uh, <laughs> so he's more. coming on here, people. Look out for that stream. It's going to be called something like Tales of uh, uh, a Sex Club, uh, Confessions of a Sex Club Addict. Yeah. That's interesting to me because I mean I've, I've asked you this on WhatsApp, but I. And you know this is true. He has interacted with very, very famous people in that environment. Yeah, he knows. Yeah. He knows the score. He's not going to spill names on your stream, obviously. But yeah, he's we've Lord. already gone through all the limits and that. And yeah. including has he, his, including by his, the way, like, has, has he told you privately who these people were, or have you not asked? Yeah, and 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 some of the things like, like oh, right, give I'm us gonna, one then. Give us I'm, one. No, I'm not going to say exactly. Come on, just one. Hang on, hang on. No, it, I, I'm not going to give you the exact name. No, that, that wouldn't be fair. And then that stream <laughs> ends before it began. But um, you know, like your Lucy Pinders and that, your sort of 90s glamour models. Yeah. They turned easy. up at those parties. And some of the things he told me, man, he said, and, uh, what, you wait, till, you know, he's a very posh lad. And when he comes on, the way he talks about it, he just you can you can you can hear, you can feel the obsession and the you know the 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 sort of desire in his voice. Oh, I, 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 there, there, there's this notorious, this new this notorious. They call it the wall of asses, and all the women have to go into this other room, and they there's all these holes, and they all put their asses through it, and you know you no one knows who they're fucking, and it's like you you, you just look at them and then oh, he said I'll never forget the wall of asses. <laughs> <laughs> What does me is I can understand that when you're having sex and you're in the midst of desire, you might do things you might not usually because you're all caught up in it and you're with a lover. But some bloke sort of, you know, doing his crossword in the morning when maybe I should get some plasterers in and cut some holes out so that <laughs> and put a bit of put a bit of pipe lagging around them and some steps, you know, shelves, because it's not in a row. They're all sort of up and down. You know, you have to get on a ladder for some of them. Wow, and, uh, yeah, and then actually considered building a, a wall of asses. It's like the wall of faces in Game of Thrones. Has anyone seen that? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's it's like that, Dan, but it's also not like that, if you know what I mean. I haven't seen it, but there's one quite key difference. <laughs> yeah the, the, yes uh can i ask you a question chris so you can but just before we leave that ah oh, bollocks the wall of us is... yeah sorry yeah you can his, his brain's empty after the wall of asses he can't think of anything <laughs> else uh oh, no, yeah, sorry that was what i was going to say before just, I, just this i when he was telling me all about that stuff he said to me, he told me the other day, and I think this will be interesting in the stream. He said, I was one of the few people that he talked to about it who didn't resent him and had envy. You know, he said a lot of people he was telling about it, and that was obviously part of his addiction, you know, telling people, oh, last night I done this happened and this happened. And a lot of people would get a bit shitty with him, and they'd be like, oh, how's it going with the missus? <laughs> last night I had the MILF of the year, 1998. You know, all this shit. And, and I said to him, well, to be honest with you, um, Keith, we'll call him, I said, um, I think Keith it's works. a class thing mm -hmm. because... I've had a load of threesomes and foursomes, but I don't want another penis in the same room as me when I'm having sex. I want my only my penis when when I'm having sex. And you know, middle middle class and upper middle class, that sort of you know, public schoolboy stuff, they're a bit more used to that. You know, I can't yeah. imagine fucking a bird and having some bloke looking at me going, yeah, you're really giving it to her. I'll be like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> what? So you, you, don't want, you don't want David Cameron in the corner looking at you. <laughs> yeah. Catch this! Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, that's the way to go. Yeah, that, that's how it works over there, isn't it? That's basically how it happens. Basically Ooh. how it happens. Good Lord. One of my mates, King of the Gays, I, oh, I shouldn't have said that because I've said that and his name before, but he said to me that that whole Tory party were all all gay. That the whole Cameron cabinet, he said, were gay. And he that, said, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised. I'm sure that when they were in their university dorms, 
they're all tossing each other off and exactly you know, uh, you know, it's probably you know gay but again everybody. it's probably a class thing they this is going to sound weird but upper middle class people probably don't consider wanking another bloke off to be gay yeah it doesn't <laughs> count yeah no, you can even fuck count. them well, it's not gay you know <laughs> what's it called? <laughs> you know? It's a, if 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 a john major Give a, a handy little wank to David Cameron. Maybe uh, you're just helping me out. You know, <laughs> getting through the day. I wanted to ask you a question because obviously, yeah. again, I've I've used that word. Obviously, there you go. But yeah. it is um, uh, relevant to this to to you. You have obviously spent a lot of time in Asia, and you mentioned Thailand quite a lot there. For me, as someone who's never been there, who's never experienced that, is Thailand what everyone thinks it is in terms of for, for for a white western man is thailand the stereotype if you know what i mean do it, white guys go there to do the obvious it, yeah 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 and there's no and other also, reason it, if that's what you want it's actually better than you think i mean and so is Cambodia, so is Vietnam. It's, it's a Southeast Asian thing, you know. They they're onto it. And but Thailand we, is the one, isn't it? That's the the, well, the the so-called sex tourist country. That's the one that everyone says. They've all got these old. I mean, in Thailand now, I would say when I first went out to Thailand when I was about thirty five, thirty six. Um, the uh, the average age of a brass has gone up without a doubt. Hmm. Uh, that's changed. Uh, Cambodia historically had a, a reputation for a lot of uh, child abuse and child sex trafficking. I've never seen or been offered that in all my time in Asia. The only time I had something like that, I was sitting up on the riverside there and this sort of two street kids come up to me. And she just lifted up her top. You know, she was like six. And I was like, fuck off. And Jesus, just, her man. mate just put her hand out, like, for some money. And I was just, you know, what do you do? Do you give them the money? Because that photographer over there for the Sunday mail, you know, <laughs> I, I'm now paying for sex of a child. You know, it's shocking. And I'm just going, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> get up and walk away and then they're following you and people think oh uh, but you know in in 20 years of degenerate sex tourism well to, uh, apart from the last six because i've been birded off because i because I, I had enough of it in the end but if you're a young man and you want to have a lot of really fun sex yeah, thailand's fucking a paradise you know, and you'll also so, yeah. and, and you'll also make loads of really nice friends. You know, it's not brutal like people think. The the the, the it it's hard to explain. It's like you can't explain it. It's not like going in there and it's all very sort of give us some money, go and fuck off out. There is there's a lot of laughter, a lot of humour. They've got a very different approach to sex than the West. Their they, their cultural relationship with it is different. Um. Yeah. It's, That's interesting. I know loads of people on the dissident right who've been out there and engaged and have said... Well, I, I didn't want to actually ask that question, but I I assumed that it would be very common. People who yeah. present themselves as being one way and then you know behind the scenes they're in Thailand. Yeah. you know, And I've had it, I've right had it with, with the drugs as well. Loads of people. Right, right. Yeah. Don't tell anyone, but I've got a bit of a crack problem. For everyone watching, Chris has not told me any of this privately. I don't know. He he keeps his secrets. Don't worry about yeah, it. He, I, I he's, a comp yeah. he's a competent, uh, you know, he'll keep his secrets for you. I don't yeah. like being lumbered of a secret, but if someone comes to me for help over substances, that's just, that's got to be, you know, that's, that's a line in the sand that I'm not crossing. That that goes right, nowhere. Right. Otherwise, people won't ask for help, and that's what usually people need is a bit of help and a bit of a bit of understanding. Here's the problem, Chris. So you've explained that Thailand is essentially what I imagined it was. 
from all of the uh, stereotypical interpretations of it. Hang on, that, um, not all of it. I mean, you're looking. You're talking Bangkok, Pattaya, Patong. You know, right? I'm you sure know, there's, there's plenty there's, of lovely beaches there is and, still and nature. A very yes. traditional country there, and Cambodia. Right. You're talking about three or four roads in the middle of Phnom Penh. The rest of Cambodia is a, a very traditional. You know the 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 um, the provinces. You know these people get their water out of wells. They've got a cow that they use for milk, and they've got chickens that lay eggs. You know, so it's important. I say that as well. Oh, that's fine. Uh, I've never been into Asian women. That's not my thing. Again, we were talking about blondes earlier, and I know I'm going to offend you again because you, you like you like the Asian. Well, girl. let me tell you something funny. I when I was in my twenties and I was on the smack, I obviously wasn't going on holiday because it complicates things. I didn't have the money and you know, and there was a bit of me that thought, you know, my mates would come back and they go, Fucking hell man, you can just hire a scooter, you don't need a license, crash helmet, any of that shit. You put your headphones in, burn around, absolutely shit face, like a pint of lagers about 50p. You know, you, you wake up with three birds in your bed and you start again in the morning. Fucking brilliant. I was, I remember thinking, I'm not going to go out there because if I do go out there, I'm going to love it so much that when I get back home, I'm going to be just like, this, this <laughs> really pissing down dark, cold yeah. country because the other thing about southeast asia is just your regular woman is wearing almost nothing because it's so hot you know you wake up and go and get a cup of tea and the bird who serves you's just got like a boob tube on and a pair of knickers and you're like morning <laughs> you know i'm 50 years old it's getting a bit much for the old ticker but um and and that's exactly what happened when i got clean at 35 um I had a couple of friends who were looking after my business that gave me the money to finally pay for a rehab that wasn't an NHS one. And when I come out of rehab, they'd done very well looking after the business. I had a lot of money in my account. I thought, someone come around my house and said, why, have you, why aren't you doing anything? You're not a junkie anymore. Why don't you go on holiday? And that mm -hmm. same fear was there. But I thought, yeah, but now I can work anywhere. And I went out to Thailand. I went for eight days. That's the flight at the end of each of that. So it's actually only six days. Yeah. And it was the best six days of my life. And when I got home, I told a friend, he said, book another holiday because you'll forget that. And I booked uh, three months for the following Christmas. And I spent the next 15 years going out there as often as I could. And then I discovered Cambodia. And I, when I discovered Cambodia, I was kind of over all the whoring, you know. I had I met a girl in Thailand who's one of the most significant romances in my life. And she's the book is kind of built around her to an but not the book, the manuscript. <laughs> um, um <laughs> the document. <laughs> the document. That's a good one. Um and so I, you know, and even when I got to Cambodia and, you know, the girls in Cambodia up at the red light area, you know, you'll go in a bar and there's 20 or 30 of them and three Western men. And mm. you can just say, do you want a drink with me, you two? And they go, yeah. And you buy them drinks and they don't cost, they're, they're very cheap. But I think I banged about two birds and I just thought, I'm done with this. I want a girlfriend. Really? I, Interesting. Mm. Yeah, and then I fell in love with one and I'm still with her six years later. Uh, so Gregor on the chat says, the women are barely clothed on Newcastle High Street in <laughs> midwinter <laughs> too. That's Did true. you see PJW's video about it, Grego? I was I was all ready to slag him off in the comments, but he actually... Wait a minute, wait, hang on. Paul Joseph Water made a video about Newcastle women. Is that yeah, what happened? I'll, let's show a bit of it. And I'll tell Fuck you why, man. Dan, because... So what he does quite a lot is use images of, like, sexy women... But the video is actually, look what Mid Journey is doing, you know, using sexy women to make money. And it's like, yeah, but so are you. You look at your thumbnail. Do you know what I mean? Isn't it so amazing he how he has never been banned from anything? Isn't that incredible? He's, yeah, 
he's managed to tread that line a little bit strange yeah i think you're right there actually anyway so he makes this video because so someone in the chat correct me if i'm wrong but someone just set up a camera or something on the corner of a, a busy road in newcastle on a friday night oh, and dear I, think, me. I think they left it running for a few hours now i've been out partying in newcastle i know what it's like middle of february there's girls in two tubes and like their fat's hanging over the sides of it. They're on like eight inch heels. They're orange. Mate, mate, it's a Tuesday night right now. If I go to Newcastle, literally again, using that word, literally right now, mate. same thing. I can show you. I don't know what you're doing sitting here having this chat. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> um, so this video, he, he left it running, I think, for a few hours, edited it down to the funniest bits which is basically young women out on the piss looking like tarts. Now, I was thinking, you know, this is a bit shit because the reason women dress like that is because a lot of men are attracted to it. Men like that. It works. That's why they do it. Yeah. Now, a lot of men aren't. I get that. But these women, and I was thinking, I'm not having this, Paul Joseph Watson. You keep showing the clips of these barely <laughs> naked women and you're... And then he said, he said, you know what? He, he sort of said, why has this gone viral? Why is everyone saying this is bad? He said, I think there's worse things going on in the world than a couple of women out in Newcastle having a good time on, on a Friday night. And I was like, there you go. I'm so glad I didn't write my comment and not watch the rest of the video. But let's have a look at a bit of the clip. And I want the truth from the people in the chat. I want the truth. Um, there are certain type of women, let's be honest, and I just it's a simple couple of words it's tap, it's would tap, or would not tap, or variations of those you would or you wouldn't. For me, I would fuck every single one of these birds in this video <laughs> that I've watched several <laughs> times. <laughs> All right, well, you might not have heard them speak, so we'll see. Oh no! I, oh man, they're so up my street. I, I like street trash. I, I love no, it. I you visually yes, but when you hear a girl talking a broad Geordie accent, oh, it yeah. might change your mind. Sounds like a fucking taxi driver. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, man, just fill that space with meat. Come on, um, sorry. Right, no, let's... No. <laughs> no, I'm not accepting that. No, I way. must admit, I, I I had some brass in Edinburgh, and it was. That Edinburgh accent didn't do it for me, but I still, uh, you know, since I was paying, I, I continue to. <laughs> since you were paying, yeah, okay. Fair enough. Anyway, I want I want honesty from you in the chat. Don't just give it all that bullshit. I want to know if you'd tap or would not tap. It is a uh, it's a TikTok video that went viral, so it is small. There's nothing I can do about that. Let, let's have a look. Let's, let's have a look at this. Uh, you're going to have to suffer some of PJ Watson. I'll let it run for a few minutes. That was me letting it run for a few minutes. I mean, hang on a minute. Look, hang on, hang on, well, hang on, hang on. Look, just some beautiful young women. She, the one in the middle, she does have her entire leg out, though. Yeah, but it's that's a bit. Right? Look, I've got five she, female bodies. They're gonna do what they're gonna do, obviously. <laughs> JP, obviously. because they've got Essex Envy, Baz is all over it. He, Baz loves it. Yeah, There's loads of people who are actually... Uh, Kajetal reckons Northern UK accents are sexy. Every I'm single one of these girls, by the way, apart from one of them, if I can see properly, are blonde. Now, are they naturally blonde or are they fake blonde? I don't care. The more the artists, it's the better for me. Anyway, <laughs> let's roll VT. Go for it. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Let's just uh, go back. Hang on. If anyone, any red-blooded male in the chat is not banging those two on the either side, you're off your head. I don't know. What no, 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 no. Or. I have to look. I have to disagree. The best one, and I'm not enamored with any of these, is in the middle. 
The you two on the side. Do. Hang on, let me explain. The two on the this is the problem, and people in the chat will back me up. I'm sure they will. The two on the side could be drag queens. They could be men dressed up as women. They look yeah, so you know, you know, you know over the top. Like, yeah, they, they look. They look like drag queens. I don't. I'm not into it at all. They're, they're so tall as well. Look at them. That's like giants. They're wearing stilettos, Daniel. If Come on, this, it's let, too much. It's too far. If you're gonna let drag queens prevent you from enjoying the the, the <laughs> overflowing, effervescent female sexuality on show, there. Look at glass, glass. Oh that's dear a me! You're, that's a that's a that's a sacrifice I was never willing to make, man. I would fuck those things till the sun went up and down 30 <laughs> times. I'd, I'd fuck them till my penis fell off, I tell you. Oh, anyway, let's go. Oh, no, hey, calm, calm down, Chris. Yeah, boy, look at those two together. Like a big fat sandwich. Oh, yes. oh, leave it off this clip, which is... Text notes. Young women on a night out in Manchester is now the centrepiece of a culture war controversy. <laughs> Come on. Come on. You lying fast. Well, over 30 million views. Much of it fueled by American. Yeah, 30 million of them on me. So don't understand that for young women in northern English cities, this is their regulation winter uniform. <laughs> it's almost mandatory at this point, like a rite of passage. But for what it was, the clip sparked some pretty vitriolic reaction. Disgusting. They look so cheap and ugly. Ugly, fat, disgusting. Whores. Yeah, there you go. And that was mainly from men. And I'll tell you what, those men, they're bullshit. You know, they, they, they've got <laughs> they've got the arm that they can't pull birds. So they take it out on those Whores. lovely slags. Whores of Babylon. That's hilarious. <laughs> 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 if, in fairness, that was quite good. But the thing is, you know, he means that, you know, oh, come on, man. And then we go back to talking about letting your hair down a bit and going watching a film at the cinema because, you know, I mean, what, you really want fucking that bird from the good life coming in with a jumper on? Oh, hello, Alpha, are we going to plant some carrots? No, man, I want filth. I want the... My missus has got a bottle of perfume that's a stiletto heel. <laughs> she presses the top of it. It's got perfume in it. Right, right. I, I think oh. there's something to be said, because we were talking about women earlier, and there's something to be said. You and I have talked about enjoying trash from time to time, right? Yeah. And we can identify what, what a trashy woman is. And the point is, you're not going to marry her. You're not going to have kids with her. But you can enjoy a company from time to time. Right, hang on. I would there argue that because you get a lot of birds, right? Like my first missus and my second missus and my third missus, <laughs> who when they were sort of 16 through to 24, went out like that because they were 16 to 24. They discovered the power of their sexuality. Like men, when they're 16 and 24, go out with their tight T-shirts on or whatever. I mean, I had dreadlocks and all that, but I was at art school, which is the tar equivalent at art school. So, but when they get to the end of their 20s, you know, it's time to leave the fucking fake lashes and the stilettos for the bedroom, you know, and you do, you know, you, you know, I think that it's a fair enough state phase to go through. If you're still doing that when you're 35, 40, then yeah, it's. Uh, well, you, know. you should go to Newcastle on a Saturday night. There's plenty of 50 year olds wearing exactly those things. No way, You'll man. Love it. The, the aged whores of Babylon. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Divorced. I, 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 yes, all of that. Fantastic. I don't want to use the word, but that doesn't quite have the same ring to it. Um, I think it's a, I don't know, it's a, an, an argument, that will, a debate that will go on forever. But here's the thing. Why do prostitutes dress like that? Why do women going out on the pool dress like that? Why do porn stars dress like that? You know, Because men, men, men like it. They want it. The it's, majority it's of men do like that. I think yeah. it's fair to say. And I know all men don't. You know, I know those sort of actually perverted men who really have problems with sex don't but when people I, I know i know plenty of blokes who pretend they don't like that 
because their missus isn't like it and their missus would go fucking mad if they admitted it. <laughs> and when they come out with me and not them, and, yeah, it's a different story all of a sudden. Look, I think, I think there's a – me and a friend of mine, we uh, we go to the local pub. It's a Weatherspoons, right? It's very trashy. Uh, and we have this, this grading system for women. We have this thing called the Weatherspoon Six. <laughs> so if – if there's a barmaid who works in Weatherspoons and she's like a six out of 10, she's far more appealing than most other women in that environment. And I don't know if I can explain why, but it, it's, it's kind of a, do, do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, she's, yeah, yeah. She, she's not yeah. a supermodel. She's not hideous. She's a normal girl working a regular job and you kind of like that in a way and it, it's i don't know it's it's it's, it's weird but you, you wouldn't obviously marry her or have kids with her yeah but you might actually because well, when you, she... you, you might but it's it's, it's more of a uh, more of a, 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 a short-term thing in a way <laughs> when she's pulling that thing down in between her cleavage hey, maybe boy. i don't know maybe it's uh <laughs> i don't know i don't know well, well what, it's, what, uh, what are your opinions on marriage, by the way, on in general? On I am I'm getting married. It's all planned for next year. I've got you're actually just, you're, you're going to sign the paper. You're going to do the whole thing. We're going to get married in Cambodia and in England, and then we're going to try and have some children. All right, great, great. That's Did plan. you it's always envisage yourself getting married, or was this? I always thing? envisage myself not getting married and not having children. <laughs> all right, then, good. Good. But when my missus said to me, I'd like to have children, I said, listen, love, I'm 46, I think I was then. I said, um, you know, I already work too much. I want to write. I And she knows I'm up all night writing all the time anyway. And she said, what is what are you talking about? She said, you work, you bring in the money, I look after the children, that's how it works. And I was like, oh, what, like, like a traditional masculine and feminine thing and so i went yeah all right sweet i said so what if the baby's screaming in the middle of the night you're gonna deal with it she said that's what women do they, they raise children i was like sweet let's do it so nice. next well done and yeah. she's all raised her sister's kids her sisters have got about 30 between them and uh um, because one of the husbands run out she uh she raised them so she knows what she's doing she's delivered a couple of kids when she was about 14 she did not her own. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. <Okay. laughs> Come on, get out. I thought I had something. <laughs> um, a couple of super chats, and then we're going to wrap this up. Um, uh, where are we? Um, done that one. Elena. Hello, Elena. Elena's also over on the lock picking scene. She was even talking today about getting some picks. Good Lord, Elena. Elena, thank you for that 10 bit. I'll just refresh entropy because for some reason, Oh, man. If anyone donated to Entropy, it's crashed for some reason. Oh, I might be able to start it again. Hang on. Start streaming. This is the fun bit. Nice. Build up to a nice crescendo ending where I'm having to sign into Entropy. Ah, oh, bollocks. I'm not going to bother. If, if you did donate via Entropy, I'll have to have a look at it later because it's, it's doing this weird thing that it does. Are you on Millennial this yeah. year? I am, yeah. This, but it'll be my sixth time. Six, Jesus. When, when's that? What day? I think I am on the twenty third, but it's like three o'clock in the morning my time. So I think it's actually the twenty second um, UK. I don't know what day that is. It's probably like two uh, days or something. Let me check. Twenty well, twenty anyway. third is Saturday for me. So I don't know. Yeah, I think it's Friday. About hang on. Three, two, one, twelve, eleven, ten, nine, eight, eight o'clock Friday night. I'd guess if Friday's the twenty second. Anyway, about... pardon. What are you going to talk about? What do you think? Me and Because the, the, the last few times you've been on there, you've talked about art school and all of that. We've type got of thing. that in common. We done AI last yeah. year. We yeah. never. So what we do you never, think? We never. We never decide in advance when we do it. So um, I don't know. I'll just. Just see what happens. Let it flow. He's easy conversation, you know. He's just he he's he's an, he's easy to talk to. So it's just a, mm. a pleasure, you know. Fl 
flies by. I mean, I think it's a, a miracle that he does it every year. I mean, logistically, setting up... I had a, I set up a stream with Semiagog. Well, I've set up a few of him, but one of them took 48 emails. And and <laughs> Woes is doing like five or four people a day for two weeks solid. I don't know how he, you know, how he does it. <laughs> well, if that's the real Barkley Walsh in the chat, he's posted something quite humorous. I was talking to him earlier, actually. There was something we, were, me and you were talking about earlier. He, he, he's trying to give up smoking at the moment, and I just told him it's... it's Does he smoke of... cigarettes? Actual cigarettes? Yeah, yeah. Well, thank God he's not a fucking vapor, for crying out loud. Either smoke... Oh, well, there you go. Either There's you no smoke Nicole. real cigarettes or nothing. That's what I think. Is that really what you think, Dan? It is what I it is what I think. As a non-smoker, I'm embarrassed by vapors like you, Chris. I have to say. I embarrass you. Yeah. Smoke a fucking cigarette. Why? Do, because it's fake. You, Dan, you want, because you, it's you fake. Want, I like you, artifice. Oi, Dan. Dan, Dan, Dan. What? What? Are you gonna smoke some crack? <laughs> I, I I might try it, I don't know. Who, well, who are you knows? gonna? Because it's fucking embarrassing hanging around with you not smoking crack. Yeah, Going out to whoever smokes and having two pints of beer. Mis- oh, get some crack up your head. You're an you are deliberately misinterpreting what I'm saying. Oh, close says. <laughs> right, Dan, if you don't think I'm not embarrassed about having this thing stuck <laughs> to my mouth like my mother's flaccid nipple, fuck's sake. Yeah, Art close right. says, just a few shekels for Griftonia. Great to messers, Christopher and Daniel. Oh, I like the full names. On a stream from Ireland where the far right is on the rise, we are told. I wish. Well, it looks like it, though. I mean, there's, there, there has been a lot of global attention. They're, they're not putting up with it. I'm seeing a lot more videos. You know the kinds of videos. Um, but the, Is it, though? The, is it really? Well, what I think it is, the, the thing that makes you realise that it's a bit sad is... The reason they're on the rise is because their problem is bigger. You know, mm. it's I've got friends who live out there and they say, you know, it's just not our country anymore. It's gone. That's it's not our country. Anyway, Tom nice one, Arklo. And uh, happy Christmas to you, mate. I'm sure you'll have a good one, you and Mrs. Arklo, and much appreciated. Stephen Campbell dropped an air and center in. Lol, I've seen the hose of Babylon go. <laughs> Hang on, we've got a new uh, a new legend. I've seen the hose of Babylon guy on Telegram, and he's a flat earther. Ah, oh, no, there you go. No, oh, he's a flat chested one and all. Uh, such silly people. Yeah, that. Ho- but hose of Babylon is quite funny. I've if if you said to me I've got a porno called Hose of Babylon, I'd probably ask to borrow it. And I'm off the porn and I ain't done it for a few years. Hose of Babylon. Imagine it's a great that. name, by the way. It's a great name. If you could get those for, for a screenshot. By the I way, just... if if I if I just for the sake of argument, if I came on here and if I said to you that I was now a flat earther, how would you handle that? That's a really interesting question. Um, because you know me, we've got a friendship, we've got a... I'd have to, I'd, 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 I mean, I'd have to say, okay, can we talk about it? Is that something we can discuss? Can you tell me why? And I'd, so I'd you like want to debate about my points versus your points. Well, I haven't got any. I'm, I'm like the atheist in that, in that situation, aren't I? Because I, I haven't got evidence that the world is round. This is the why I think the flat Earth thing is quite became quite big quite quickly because you know i've been told it is but i haven't been do you know what i mean it's a weird one isn't it so you know i i trust if i say to you i trust the scientists you go well you didn't a few streams ago when you were talking about the coof and i'll be like yeah "Yeah, but there's there's different scientists (laughs) you know so i think it's interesting because i'm I'm not, you're I'm, flat I'm, no, no, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm not a flat earther to, to just make that clear. But at the same time, the only way you could realistically, if you even cared enough to do it, to convince these people that they were wrong is to actually take them up into space and show them, right? Otherwise, well, no, they're not going to believe it. 
there's actually sci very simple scientific tests you can do, but when they do them, they just say no. But that's you know, what they, I mean. They, they, you, you can show them all. You can show them all the science, but they're not going to believe it. The only real oh, okay. way to convince okay. them is to have them in space in a rocket to see the planet as it is. Right? Could you imagine doing it and then him going? Yeah, I don't know what you put in my soup this morning, but that is not planet Earth you're projecting. <laughs> yeah, you, <laughs> yeah, yeah you, you give me LSD or something. But it does <laughs> but you know what? The the fucked up thing about that is what I mean, I've never been to space. Yeah. So I don't know, really, do I? I haven't seen it for myself. So but there are do? very simple tests. I mean there's that really funny one where they've done it themselves and it's still on YouTube. And he says, if, if I can't remember the ins and outs of it, cause I didn't, I didn't spend a lot of time watching it cause it was quite stupid. But he says, if this is, if the, if the, if the earth is round, someone in the chat might be able to, uh, they'll know this cause it's got a famous one. He says, if the, the earth is round, this test should show a 15 degree drift. And then he does the test and he says, and there you see a, 15 degree drift and then he's a bit like huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's quite a famous video in the sort of flat earth debunking world dawn professional uh, snipers for the army they have to take into account the curvature of the earth when they're taking a long shot Isn't well that i've heard that some some I've heard, I've heard some some gun enthusiasts say you do but i've also mm. heard other gun enthusiasts say you don't so Again, I, I, I don't know. Me neither. By the way, I would love to have a gun. Yeah, I'd love to have loads. If yeah. guns were legal in the UK, first of all, I think it would be a bit of a disaster, but I would have many. I would yeah. own a lot of guns. Uh, yeah. yeah, me too. Sure. When I was younger, when I was in my early 20s and I went to America quite often to travel around, I went into um, gun shops and I would hold these guns and, and hold, you know like have a look at them. And the feeling of power that you have when you're holding a desert eagle in your hand, it's unmatched. You can't replicate that. Yeah. It's well, you really, can. really uh, cool. I, I can't say too much, but there's I, – and I've really got to be careful here, but <laughs> – You can guess the rest, I think. Right. Right. We'll, we'll leave that there. I'll tell you something re remarkable I've done. Because I knew that you could go shooting in Thailand, oh. um, on my third day of my first ever holiday, I went back to this massage parlor where I'd had a, a, a four-handed massage, they call it. It's just it's two women. And uh, <laughs> I said, can I hire you for the afternoon? And they were both like, yeah, we negotiated prices. And I took them both to the uh, the little market, like not – fake clothing shop down the edge of the road and i bought them both bikinis and matching stilettos took them to the salon got their hair done got a load of makeup done took them up to the shooting range and had one either side of me while i had two glocks <laughs> side arm <laughs> just with these birds and i it was just one of the most amazing times of my life fucking amazing no Should glasses, no headphones, just these two birds. And yeah, took them home, thanked them with my penis, and uh, oh, lucky girls. Good for well, them. you know, I didn't want to let them down. <laughs> bad Should be in a Guy Ritchie way. film with that. Wait, Good when boy. they see me shooting off my weapons, they they would have felt very let down if uh, if I hadn't finished the job. I can't sign into fucking entropy. It didn't really require. Dan, what do you make of swearing? I'm trying to do less of it. It's, it's, swear. A, it's it's it is a tick for me as well. I'm I don't want to like swear. Articulation, isn't it? Say what say yeah. you yourself. And also the more you swear, the less impact it has. And you know, they're good. They're well, what's good. the what's that famous comedian? He's a uh, Jerry Seinfeld, the um the son of comedian in America. He said that he he doesn't use swearing in his stand-up act because it cheapens the joke. But no, it's under, but it's undeniable that a swear word in a joke makes it funnier in a way. It's mm -hmm. um, it, it's just one of those things like people get off on it. It's a release of emotion. Well, that one joke I ever 
wrote has got a swear word in it and it needs it. So I can, mm. I can understand that. Anyway, people, it's nearly three o'clock in the morning. I've still got to do some writing. So, Dan, I could talk to you forever. Um, yeah. I'm going to put some music on. It's been a, an absolutely fantastic chat. Can we have a Dan or an Iconoclast or whatever you want in the chat? Show Dan some appreciation. Um, he will be the director of photography and editor of the movie of my manuscript. Edit that. I didn't agree to that. Editing's the worst <laughs> job. So That's boring. the worst thing in the world. I'm going to get you and splicing as well to save no, no, money. No. Yeah. God, no. <laughs> yes, thank you, everyone. Merry Christmas. I'm sorry we didn't delve into the Israel-Palestine conflict <laughs> or anything like that. Fuck that. No way. Not Did a someone just suggest it? Are they asking questions? No, I just like, thought oh, that's what people would expect, but no way. Yeah. Um, I am. I'm just fishing out a bit of music. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Right, Fantastic end to the stream. Um, Dan, always a pleasure, mate. Uh, I'll probably ping you over some uh, messages around Christmas Day and that. I will be streaming Christmas Day, people. So if you're on your own or you're, you know, it can be a difficult time. I'll be doing a two-hour stream, probably around the same time, five, six, six, seven, or four, five, this kind of time. Um, so if you're stuck for something to do and you just want to hang around with some people who are sort of all right, you're more than welcome. It's been lovely to see the numbers. Um, thank you to everyone who donated. It allows me to justify spending time doing this and not what actually earns me money because uh, things are getting more expensive. Even Christmas time, Day but... is Monday, isn't it? Christmas Fuck Day. Knows. <laughs> I, don't I don't even know what year it is. I don't even know. I can jump on for for time <laughs> if you want. Yeah, that'll be a pleasure. If you're, I'll be here. You just knock on the old uh, internet door, and I'll let you in. Yeah. Um, thanks to everyone who donated. Thanks to everyone who came to visit. Thanks for everyone who got busy in the chat. Thanks to all of you for coming. It's such a luxury to be able to just do a stream and now I'll get an audience. It's been going on for six, seven years now and it's a real pleasure. And most of all, thank you, Dan. It's it, it always, they just, I just love streaming with you. So thank you very much, man. Good all luck right. with everything. Cheerio guys. Merry Christmas. Goodbye. Take care, Dan. It's great stuff. Any Dan, you know, you know, I've got a friendship with Dan. That's not like a YouTube thing, obviously. It's usually him drunk and then <laughs> me half asleep because of the time difference. But um, as soon as I hear his voice on a stream, like a lot of people in the chat said, it's like, man, I miss the iconoclast. And, I, you know, I I just, when a new icon, I know this has been said a million times, probably by me as well. But when a new, I'm, I'm going to say it, I'm going to say the, the word he didn't like, but when a new Iconoclast video dropped, I was like, wicked, cup of tea, slice of, slab of cake, and it would just be great because he's a great filmmaker, which is why he will be assisting me in the making of my uh, movie, of my manuscript. Look after yourselves, people. Here's a bit of music by Scrub's favourite, Bally G, Paul Mumford himself. There's still time to throw the Christmas grift in, um, and I will be putting your messages on the screen. So here we go. Bally G, Cold Hard Steel, and I dedicate this to Tech Roach, and bless you, my friend. If you want to talk to me, you've got my email. I'll, have, I'll talk to you, just not drunk. You understand that, I know, because you're not stupid. Um... Uh, what am I doing here? Chrome tab. <laughs> Have I done this before? That one, this one, you've got the audio, and there'll be a little bit of silence. See you later, people. <laughs> Bye. I haven't got his number and he lives in Australia. Feel the dawn of your final day. Feel the fear and go anyway. Get a ride in that big black lane. Oh.
It's the 22nd. It's the 23rd. You can go. I'll put the link up on Twitter. I mean, X. Um, I think it's three o'clock in the morning, my time. So about five or six, eight o'clock, I think. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, one, two, three. Eight o'clock UK time on the 22nd. So like two days time. But I'll put the link up on Twitter. I mean, X. There you go. Um, and again, I don't know what's happening with Entropy. I know those lads. I'll tell them that it's fucked because that's terrible. If you did donate on Entropy, apologies that I didn't get to read that out. Um, if you don't catch me on Millennial and you find yourself um, uh, at a loose end on Christmas Day, about four or five o'clock, you know, I want to spend the evening with my missus. And so because of the seven hour time difference, that's a bit difficult, but. She don't even know it's Christmas, so <laughs> happy days. Look after yourselves, people. Whatever happens, life is an absolute treat. Look after yourselves. Ta-ta. Hoi-ta. -ta.